<laughs> Alright team, welcome to Off the Platform. I have fucking lost track of episodes we're up to. It must be, I don't know, we've been going for about a year now, so it's coming up 50 something. Uh, but anyway, this episode I have with my with me, Mr. Rob Hall. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, sir. How are you? I'm fantastic. Love the uh, Greg is uh, indisposed again, so Jackson is riding solo. But that's all right. That's how we like it. I don't tell Greg that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell him. I'll keep <laughs> yeah, don't, you don't tell. I won't tell. <laughs> uh, so Rob is well. Rob's a powerlifter, and would you would you call yourself as a powerlifter, Rob? Uh, yeah, I'd call myself a powerlifter uh, at least. Uh, well, for now, we well, retired powerlifter at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-retired. Uh, Semi-retired. Put a, put, a golf, <laughs> put a golf here and there then. I think I think I might have to get into it. You know, I got a mean swing, man. I got a mean swing for sure. <laughs> get the steps in. So <laughs> Rob has competed for what five years? I want to say uh, you started in 2015, so six years now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've had the last year off. Ish. Uh, yeah, for over the, since uh, December uh, last year, I tore my hamstring. So this whole year, pretty much been off off of everything was that did lifting squatting uh, squatting i had a meet uh early december uh with my second attempt i think it was 909 uh right when i got into hold termination right and that's this fun. yeah the the uh the bend the bar uh yeah, four, yeah. yeah 412 and a half so that's yeah yeah 909 and uh in pounds and freedom units um <laughs> the so I was going to say, I was going to ask about what happened in that meet. So that was like, because I saw you squat uh, 903 in the gym. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That, that's four, yeah, 410 for our um, Kiwi listeners. So, I mean, you were looking your strongest ever for that meet. What would you, what do you reckon for the hamstring? Like, what was it? Did you feel anything in prep or did <laughs> it just come out, out of the blue? Uh, it seemed like out of the blue. The only thing that was different than I did was uh, I dropped quite a bit of weight uh, to make the 308s. Uh, I'd been walking around uh, sub 335, though, for quite some time. Uh, and I wanted, to, I wanted to do a meet in the 308s before uh, I moved on to a different deal. And uh, I see I did the 903 in training. I did a 1003 in a suit, uh, single ply suit, like I want to say maybe about a couple weeks or so before that. Uh, so I was back in the A game and all that stuff. I think I hit 565 for a double uh, bench also uh, yeah. beforehand. So I was uh, I was pretty pretty keen and ready to go. Uh, the only thing different was doing that water cut, which was quite a bit. Uh, I want to say I started probably around 340 or so, and I got down like 307 before the meet. <laughs> so I gradually knocked off a, a good chunk of, chunk of that before I did my water cut. I think I started my water cut around like 325, uh, 330 or so. That's, fuck, that's a hearty drop, man. Yeah, that's that's like sort of the limits of where you would want to push it from as well. Like, I mean, I put the weight back on. I, I, mean, I put I put up to like 332 back on uh, before the meet. I had scheduled all my meals and all that stuff, and I really had the sodium. I, I implemented anything I could to uh, put that weight back on. So I was I put I put all of it back on uh, fairly easy, but uh, I think I was just a little bit more dehydrated uh, than normally, and uh, my warmups were more moving super well. Uh, and then just getting to that second attempt, it just it just snapped. Oof. the I mean, so you've had that injury, obviously. That was a pretty big injury. I saw recently you also just had rotator cuff surgery. Yeah. You, yeah. Or your rotator cuff doing like, I mean, it's it's lightweight for you. Like it was a fairly <laughs> standard weight for you. It was like 530 yeah. or something. Yeah, 525. Uh, 525. So that was mid-April. Uh, just went into uh, my normal bench session. I was wrapping up that that main lift. Uh, second set was 525 for a double. Uh, first one felt uh, normal. Second rope was fine. It flew off and then midway up, it just, that snapped and it just immediately just came back down. I wasn't exactly sure what happened. I thought I just misgrooved it. Uh, so I tossed it off me. It was kind of like, okay, that was fucking weird. Uh, I kind of got my shoulder unhinged and unstuck there. 
did a few push-ups. I was like, all right, well, I can still press. I don't understand what's going on. So I was about to do it again. I was like, we're this close to doing it again. I was like, mm, maybe I should just call it for the night and just uh, <laughs> and see. So uh, <laughs> I called it and was like, all right, let me just, uh, let me head to the, uh, the hospital real quick and see if I can get an x-ray. And it's like, see, I think it might be done for my labrum or something. Yeah. Uh, and then by the time I got, uh, I got an x-ray, nothing was on there. They was like, okay, well, you need to do an MRI. That took like a few weeks to even do. Uh, and when I got that done, I was like, oh yeah, the, you tore completely. Uh, you rotated cuffs, torn. So uh, you need surgery. I was like, mm, great. That's Love crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Like, I can't believe you were going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was pissed, man. I had, I had, I had plans, man. I had shit to do. And I was just like... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I was sitting there. Yeah, sleep. yeah, Fuck. man. It was it was real late. It was about like eleven or so at night. No, it wasn't really anybody. There was like a few people and shit. So uh, that's normally how I train. So I was just like, man, I, I definitely need. I need to do this again. Like I need to get this other rep in. I need to get this total volume done. Yeah. And I was like, ah, well, let me just let me just call it here now. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> that's just how I am, man. But you you may be you may be the good decision it seemed so yeah you, at least logical did you, did you like leave it or did you like go to the hospital that night to get like a scan or did you leave it i, I, I didn't go there until the morning i just slept woke up walked in there and was like hey i need to get an x-ray done they were like uh well you need to go to the er i was like it's not an emergency i just need to i need you to scan this and let me know if it's fucking broke or not yeah so maybe go anyway and i was like oh, fuck you guys <laughs> i was yeah. pissed and the yeah. whole situation that had me pissed, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I know it's broke. Yeah, yeah, it's not I, an emergency. Yeah, it's not an emergency. I know I fucked it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I uh, when I got home, it started to get a little worse. I couldn't move it very much. Uh, like it had been stuck to my side uh, pretty much all night, uh, and I was able to kind of just rotate it enough to where I could like pick it up and then bring it overhead and stuff like that. I was like, what? Well, that, that's super weird. Uh, I was like, I can still move it, so I don't, I don't think it's that bad. But it was that bad, so yeah. <laughs> so they, they, yeah, it's got. But you were still pissed, obviously. So you're like, still yeah. like angry at it. You're not like taking in the situation. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I was saying. I was like, man, man it's just still having all this adrenaline going. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, when I got to the initial hospital uh, first, there was like. Um, uh, well, if it is your rotating cuff, you want to try to keep moving it so it doesn't get like solidified in there and stuff. So I was like, all right. So I just kept fucking moving around. So uh, I didn't think it was, I didn't think I had torn my rotator cuff that bad uh, until I saw the, the MRI and it was completely gone. I was like, oh. <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be there and it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it was just a big gap. And it was huge. It was like this big gap. He was like, yeah, you see that thing there? I was like, yeah, there's nothing there, is it? Like, yeah, no, it's, it's gone, man. <laughs> Uh, all right cool lovely appreciate it. Thanks. Um, what's next that's a that's a big issue that they had for a while i think from like just previous stuff i've read that when they first started treating like rotator cuff injuries and stuff and like they would get people to just hold it still like in a sling for ages yeah. before they got the surgery and stuff and then everyone just gets frozen shoulder yeah. and, you, and you're worse off than you were like initially yeah yeah that's what he that's what he told me so that it took, it took, I didn't get the surgery done until May 25th. Uh, it happened April it happened April 19th. Oh. So it'd been that whole entire fucking time. I was pissed, man. But I was yeah. pissed. I, from the MRI time frame to the surgery schedule time frame, I, hold, I was so pissed that it, I was, I, you didn't want to talk to me. I was so upset, uh, the whole situation. Uh, so uh, they was like, yeah, you don't want to, uh, do too much with it and stuff like that so i kind of still worked out a little bit i was doing uh a lot for a minute till i got the mri results it was like oh well maybe i shouldn't be doing some of this stuff uh, it's still it's, I, it's like it didn't stop my muscles from working it just stopped me yeah. from doing certain things so i just kept uh trying to move it uh and, and keep it moved so that way it didn't get fucking frozen so uh yeah i mean turned out fine i suppose and here we are are you back pressing at all uh i can i'm not exactly supposed to uh, <laughs> right now Off the record. i i have uh um i've been a little bit more ahead of schedule than their normal recovery schedule would go uh i could press at least 135 if i wanted to 
Uh, I can do a lot more than I should with the shoulder, but I just, I'm choosing not to. Uh, so right now, currently I'm just doing like five pound dumbbells, uh, unilateral pressing and stuff and, uh, mostly banded stuff, but nice. I could, if I wanted to, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's one of those things in that you're sort of actually making the intellectual decision, right? Okay. Time, yeah. to, not, time to not be a meathead. Let's like yeah. make a good decision with lifting and try and lift for a few more years. So, uh, pressing wise, yeah, I've, I've uh, I could do floor presses because that range of motion is shorter, uh, so it's a nice. little easier. Um, and I've tried to unrack uh, barbells and stuff at the C. I can unrack a barbell, I can bring it down at least uh, almost about a few inches from the chest, and I can press it okay. Uh, but the stability on Ford is just, it's not there specifically just yet. Uh, but every, every week that goes by, it gets, it gets quite a bit stronger. So uh, I don't think it'll be too much longer before I'm actually pressing something, just trying not to overdo it, which is nice. something I do. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think we're all sort of in that boat. I think that comes par for the course with being like a half decent powerlifter. you got to have that yeah. wee bit of crazy, a couple of screws loose, you know. <laughs> exactly. So got me this, so got me this predicament in the first place, you yeah, know. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> well... I mean, when you think like the normal, when I have this discussion with like normal people and they're like, what do you mean you hold like, like for us, it's like 200 kilos or whatever, but say like 500 pounds, like what do you mean you're holding 500 pounds over your face? Like, yeah. it, it's fucking retarded. Why are you doing that? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. There's the, a thrill in that, man. It's a yeah. Thrill. <laughs> it's like, like riding a roller coaster, man. You get that little excitement, that little, uh, that feel that pit in the bottom of your stomach and shit. This is exciting. Yeah maybe this is the day and then for you it was the day yeah. that was it <laughs> yeah and i've had it, it wasn't uh, the the surgery went pretty well uh right the injury in of itself wasn't um uh, it wasn't exactly painful it didn't like bother me the the knee injury that's that's the one was like um the surgery of itself was just like the worst. uh it could, that was t- terrible uh this one wasn't so bad but um the injury itself like it didn't bother me. I tossed the weight off. I was like, all right, well, what the fuck was that? The knee injury thing, just seeing my kneecap sideways, that was like in and of itself was just like, all right, something's really fucking wrong with that one. This doesn't, this doesn't feel right at all. And I couldn't move my legs. So that was a little bit worse, but uh, it didn't really, as far as like scaring something, like being scared of it didn't bother me any. Uh, once I got that healed, I went straight back to that mono lift uh, that happened in, uh, like a mental thing like I had to squat in that mono lift every time I squatted and then finally it was like all right well it doesn't really bother me and stuff and I hear him so it's not gonna do anything to me I don't know because that was that was a <laughs> quad or knee uh when was that that was a few years ago was it yeah 2018 um I, I tore my patella tendon in half uh that's just so these these things all kind of stem from my old football injuries and stuff that, that I've uh been specifically, I guess, unaddressed, uh, but like nothing there that happened, like in football, told me, like, okay, cool, I need to like not lift weights or anything like that. But the the way I treated my body in those contact sports was not very kind. So, uh, you know, these things just kind of happen over time, plus being older and stuff like that and whatnot. So, um, shit just kind of happened. Uh, I wasn't yeah. like anything specific training wise that was like, Hey, you probably shouldn't do this. And I think the shoulder was more so attributed to when I uh, tore my hamstring in December uh, and having to hold that 909 on my back and nobody took it fast enough. Uh, and the way it just kind of like had me sitting under there doing low bar. I think that's where it initially started uh, from there. So uh, it, it had been a little sore, but I attribute that from like, um, uh, just being overworked and stuff. So I, I couldn't do the overhead press. So I stopped doing overhead pressing. However, my bench pressing was doing extremely well. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't pay to any mind, right? So yeah. I didn't think anything of it. But now that I thought about it after the surgery and whatnot and stuff like that, uh, the way I couldn't sleep specifically properly like on, on my side with my arm up, I was like, mm, maybe that was from that, uh, from the meat that initially happened and just never addressed it. It really bothered me enough to even notice it's one of those things in that like everything it stems from like this little thing it's a wee niggle but we're so used to living with like especially doing powerlifting and shit like yeah. you're so used to living with like the wee niggles and stuff like that that you just like oh yeah fuck it she'll be right 
And then, yeah, was, <laughs> exactly. And then all of a sudden, oh, fuck. Oh, well, bugger. Yeah, I didn't, uh, cause like, uh, I remember I was, I was getting out of that, um, from that meet a few weeks later and was doing some, uh, a uh, little bit of like seated overhead pressing and stuff. And I couldn't get uh, the motion down enough to even press it properly. And I was like, wow, this kind of feels really weird. It's just kind of sore. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to do this for a while. Yeah. Uh, so just what you're doing, like floor pressing and, and regular bench pressing. I was like, oh, well, this moves fine. It sort of doesn't feel, uh, feel really off. And I'd always have some kind of like uh, offness in my shoulders when I, when I do meets, right? So this is just something that I've, I've always had uh, with me so did it I didn't occur to me that like, there was a potential like rotator cuff injury coming because I've always dealt with some kind of like soreness in my uh in my shoulders mm-hmm. the entire time I've been powerlifting yeah uh, and my bench press has always been great so I didn't think anything of it and this one day it was like all right well fuck all <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean yeah. yeah exactly that's the thing you're like why why would today be any different like it's always yeah. so yeah. what's the, yeah it's it's crazy the stuff that you just like accept after a while like yeah. but so, i mean that's what three relatively big injuries how how do you keep like a, a lot of people wouldn't obviously keep coming back but how do you keep that sort of like want to keep coming back what's your why uh man i'm just i'm just a really i'm a really determined person and uh having a specific mindset of like i want to reach a goal uh i get really obsessed over things uh so diving on power thing that was my obsession to 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 get it to the top get into uh a certain realm of like where only certain people have hit this certain total and stuff like that so i just became obsessed with that idea uh, even to add that other injury, the the rhabdo injury I had after the knee injury, or <laughs> right before the knee injury, and so like I've had several instances where like a normal person probably would have just like, hey, fuck all this, I'm not doing this anymore. By the you know, uh, by the first one, and uh, to me, it's, it's there's just a thrill in just lifting uh, these extreme amounts of weights and the manner you do them in that uh, is really appealing to me and. Uh, the meat stuff, that's all fine. And Danny, everybody always looks forward to that, the, the result for it. I look forward to the agony uh, of every week that comes with it, right? So the, the buildup, the anticipation of what's happening, uh, getting into that moment, that uh, those small uh, moments that I have of, of squat a thousand, you know, benching 550 something, uh, right? Those, those things are just exciting to me. They're like uh, those small endorphins that get released every time I do this. And they're quite addicting, right? So I guess oh, like yeah. posting on social media for some influencers and stuff, right? You get that little small uh, endorphin from doing that validation. To me, my validation is just nailing something like that. or just like getting a little bit better, um, knocking out these PRs, like these doubles and triples and stuff like that. Uh, those little moments are just really thrilling to me. And I, I live for those little deals. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> that's just part of the reason why I keep wanting to do what I do. <laughs> it's it, man. It's like, I know the feeling. It's like, people ask, like, yeah, why do you just keep, why, why do you keep wanting to be better at this and that? And it's like, well, yeah, you. Can, but it's hard to explain to someone who hasn't done it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they don't, they don't get that, oh, that feeling of pulling fucking 800 pounds in front of a crowd or something you know like yeah. it's it's fucking dope and just ask them what you know what's the one thing that you do is that, that you and have this extreme amount of happiness for what does that feel like to you what is that and i said well i do this i take pictures of people i would get joy out of that okay well that's the same thing for me i get this extreme amount of joy from uh fucking squatting so heavy and then yeah. yelling yelling fuck for the next five minutes yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> come off and you just like give you that adre- that adrenaline just stays eh? yeah, you're just yeah. like yeah yeah i just i get that man it, <laughs> and uh it happens with like uh i get that same kind of energy when i listen to certain music and shit like it gets me fired up uh like even outside of the gym it's just the only thing i listen to all the time so but when i listen to that on top of when i train like it's just an automatic switch when i hear certain melodies and stuff like that so i always have that energy with me and then when i get to do something like that and squat yeah. and bend and like and, and deadlift heavy and it just immediately comes out it just makes it that much more enticing for me to do that's dope that's dope what's, what's your what's your go-to uh like music genre or tunes 
uh, EDM, electro uh, house. So uh, it's made like dubstep or like trap set mix. Uh, something that has like a, a sick drop to it. Uh, or it's got some kind of like just meaty melody that's that's so nasty that I just kind of just feel yeah. in my soul. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> deep down. Yeah, yeah. There's some there's some uh, there's some heavy rock stuff. Like you know, it just depends what whatever I'm feeling. But if it's got some kind of like sick drop or just like some tone that just it just eats into my soul, I I'm all here for it. It can be almost <laughs> anything. But if it's got if it's got some kind of quick change, just just nasty beat to it, it's just, I I I live for that. And as soon as I just add lifting to it, oh, it that's just it. makes it ten times better that's, for me. Oh, that's all it. on. <laughs> have you have you ever had like the timing of like you unrack a set and then it hits the sick drop like right as you unrack it? Have you ever had a oh, set like that? All the time. I do this all the oh, time, man. I have nice. I have certain I have certain melodies and stuff. I know like uh, the time frame, so. Um, uh, I'm really methodical when I train and whatnot. So if I know a beat's going to drop here in the next 30 seconds, right? So I'll replay the certain deal uh, and I'll get it to a certain area where I want it. Uh, then I'll proceed to do my warm, my uh, setup set and get everything all ready. And by the time I'm I'm ready for it, man, I'm always like in that same realm of where it drops and like, I just get the goosebumps where I need it to. And nice. it, it happens all the time. It's happened to me in a meet before too. Uh, did the LA Fit Expo by like my first uh, year or so, my first like eight months of powerlifting. Uh, big beat for me and shit. And they asked like, what what music do you want to have played like during your lifts? Man, uh, I remember I gave him a whole list of shit. Uh, uh, I think one of the songs was like from Disturbed, and it was a it was a damn remix that the DJ made. I don't know what he had. I don't I don't know what it was, but all my last bit of my last pull. Uh, it played this fucking. I was like, man, what the fuck is this? This shit is nice. This is nice. I don't know what this is, but man, this mix is really nice. And uh, uh, I was getting getting ready, getting set up, and I just happened to get to the bar on the time where the beat was about to drop and shit. And I, I was right when it dropped, and I pulled it. I was like, damn, this is this is dope. I I love this this energy. I need this. I need more of this. Oh, it was so good, man. I <laughs> I, I think I downloaded that song afterwards and stuff like that. Uh, but god damn, it was such a it was such a good moment for me. I, I enjoyed it. You're just like I'm fucking I'm pulling this no matter what. Yeah, this is and that's all I thought, man. It was it was the last it was one of the last pulls of the meeting shit, and like the expo was closing, so there would have been a more gathering of people by then because uh, the uh, powerlifting was like one of the last things that's still open, and just seeing that crowd of people staring. And just waiting and shit, and that fucking uh, that song dropped. Oh, it was fire, man. That was man. it. That, that was, was it. it. <laughs> the that was it. The I've got that. There was three fifty, so like seven seventy or so. Yeah, I believe so. I think it's seven seventy one. I think uh, in yeah. pounds. Yeah, so it's a like, and it was a PB at the time. Oh yeah, big one. Sick, sick. Yeah, big one. And I've been doing my own training, and I think the total was two thousand fifty five. Uh, at that point, um, I had a big bench. Uh, it was 550 plus, I think, 551 or so. Uh, nice squat. I, this first time I met Bill Kazmaier also. Uh, he's talked to me uh, like a few times during that day and was uh, give me kudos for my lifting. I was like, I was fine. It, if everything went right, it was going right that day, man. That was fine. He came back, talked to me and stuff and uh, saying he admired my lifting and shit. I was just like, all right, well, I'm having a good day. Yeah, here no we go. No matter what, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah it was it was awesome that's cool man i mean I, I feel like that's part of like the cool part with powerlifting and like any sort of strength sport like especially when you get to a decent level like you can you travel around a bit you go to these big meets and you get to meet these sort of people like who yeah is like so obviously cares would be one of your favorites who else have you met that you would say is probably like one of your top dogs you've met uh, Palkin wise, uh, Andre Milanichev, I uh, didn't talk much, but just meeting him in and of itself was, uh, like the coup de grace for me. Like, God damn, the dude is, is phenomenal of an athlete. Uh, and watching him over the years has been like a big motivation for me. Oh, yeah. Um, so I finally meeting him was just like the coolest fucking thing that, and then watching him squat was just like, damn, this dude is, is the best that you can't get any better than that. It's just amazing, man. I love it. He's uh he is he I I want to see him come back. I don't know if it'll happen. You know, like it's one of the yeah. I mean, he's like early forties now, wouldn't he be? He must be early yeah. mid forties. So like yeah. yeah, he's 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 got nothing left to prove. Really, he's done his yeah, and he's dropped a ton of weight too. Uh, it looks great. 
Uh, yeah. Looking back to his bodybuilder physique and shit now, so uh, I'm not sure what he's what he's gonna do. But I don't know if he's gonna return or not or want to. But he had done all the big meets, won all of them. Uh, yeah. He has not got. He hasn't been beaten now. So yeah. Nothing, nothing else for him to prove at that point. Yeah, what's the what's what's the point? You know, health, <laughs> health, I suppose. You, yeah, health and longevity becomes the, yeah. the priority then. Yeah, exactly. He, um, I saw some pictures of him when he was like early twenties, when he was doing like bodybuilding. Dude, that guy was like was jacked. Like when people look at him and they're like, "Oh, he's just a out of shape powerlifter." I'm like, "No, no, no." If he yeah. wanted to be, he is yeah. Jack as yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly, man. Uh, but seeing those, and I was just like, it's exactly you have having that bodybuilding like physique base before you like put on all this size and stuff like that is like I think is one of the best keys to getting better at powerlifting. Oh yeah. And when people look at him, like uh, I could see, like yo, okay, yeah, dude's got a belly, doesn't look really jacked and whatnot. But seeing like in person, like he's. It's not like he's a fat, he's just a solid built dude. Like you can see like the muscle there. But I can see like a normal person looking at him like, wow, he just looks like some regular guy. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. He looks like the guy that you've been like down at the pub on a set day, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like exactly. no, he's a big dude, man. I remember yeah. uh, I went to, I did a comp um, in Serbia and mm-hmm. um, met Pet- Petrus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that is a, big motherfucking human like yeah. he those guys are just like people don't yeah people don't get it they don't you see the photos and you're like oh yeah he's just a big dude but like this guy was 170 and only like a yeah. couple inches taller than me yeah so like, he, like he's best part of 400 pounds and i'm like yeah. jesus christ yeah what watching him a big dog i could i could just tell he was a large human the way he'd walk and yeah. just be He'd almost be dwarfing the squat rack and stuff. I'm like, damn, damn there's, yeah. this dude is so large of a human. I, you know, and uh, I don't see very many big 400 pound plus people. Like Julius Maddox is one. Oh yeah, um, you know, meet him in person uh, was was pretty cool for the first time. I I saw him like early on in my years, and then uh, re met him again. Uh, and whatnot, seeing him at uh, the Arnold, and then at my meet, right, 400 plus pounds. Of, and it's it's slightly difficult for me to make me feel like i'm a small guy and like this is one of the dudes that like damn he doesn't make me feel very big yeah. at all yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is it this is what it feels like all right i'm in the yeah. right room where yeah. I'm the biggest. yeah and it's like it's uh, usually when i go into the room i am and i'm just like and i run into him and i was like all right so now i know what that feels like all right cool cool yeah. cool gotta get all bigger right. gotta get yeah, bigger yeah, yeah. There's, still, there's still some work to do yeah, <laughs> and this is, I was like 340 then too, and I was oof, I was feeling wide as shit. And then they ran into him, and I was just like, So here's me, and then here's extra of Julius. And I was like, yeah. d- Wow, All wow, right. <laughs> yeah. that's a, it's decent for an ego check. Eh? Yeah, yeah, I was like, Damn, I need to get bigger. I gotta put yeah. another 30 pounds, man. Yeah. At, least, at least another 30. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I, I, I see videos of him and uh, TD Smash. Thomas Davis yeah, yeah. on on yeah. Instagram doing like like going to breakfast and stuff, and they've got like five <laughs> breakfasts each, and I'm like, yeah. God damn it, that's what does. <laughs> been around them. Uh, I think it was the boss of bosses uh, five, I believe, and then uh, after weighing and stuff, hitting up breakfast and shit, and seeing them there, uh, just this table sack full of food and stuff like that. I'm like, ah, yeah, that sounds about right. That's about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The waitress comes over and is like, are you waiting for anyone else? Or like, no, 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 we got this. We handled this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, do you know yeah. who I am? Like, come on. Uh, yeah. TDB could throw down some food too. And I'm like, man, cause I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> you got to at that. At that so I can see you know, that energy expenditure at that size. You know, I, I know I, I eat a good amount at, at mine, but, I have an extra hundred pounds on there. I could, I could imagine, man, the appetite they must have. Just to, just to live, like, yeah, <laughs> just sitting there, they're burning calories, and it's just like that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, man, it's just the, wild, but you need it. What, what is your? Because I mean, we, I did a bit of travel through the states as well, and the the breakfast places there are like second to none. What's what's your go to breakfast? Uh. I like Kirby Lane, uh, and I like I mean anything that has uh, pancakes, uh, good pancakes for. Uh, I usually prefer like hole in a wall, like mom and pops places, uh, where I get some good pancakes. Like Kirby Lane's like not too big, but it's it's like a nice small one. Uh, but stacks of pancakes are like my go-to, and I usually try to get something that has 
the most protein packed into it. So if it's like an omelet stack with like, you know, brisket or steak yeah. or whatever. Nice. Uh, and then uh, I skipped the vegetables. So if they got them, it's, it's in there. But uh, <laughs> that, that and like a big stack of pancakes are using my favorite breakfast for sure. Nice, man. The, I mean, that was, yeah, that was one of the things when we were traveling, like you'd go somewhere for breakfast and you'd be like, yeah, I'll get a few pancakes. And they're like, how many do you want? And you're like, I don't know, like four or five or whatever. And it's like, but that, that's a big four or five pancakes. Like, yeah. like that's not <laughs> like, like pancakes here in New Zealand are like this, this thick. Yeah. Whereas like <laughs> the America ones, it's like this. And I was like, damn, all right, well, I've, I've laid down the gauntlet now. I can't not, you know, like. Yeah, there was a, <laughs> we're in a, a boss barbell club around the way. There's a, a mom and pop shop. Uh, that had pancakes and waffles and uh, they were a good size. So I was like, uh, yeah, let me get like three or four for those. I think it should be all right. Uh, I came out, it was just like plate size. And I was like, all right, cool. This is be a nice start for the day. <laughs> yeah, <this is laughs> they were amazing too. And I think I got some like cobbler thing they told me to get too. Uh, and I don't normally eat the, my desserts early uh, in my uh, recomps and whatnot, <laughs> but uh, it was like, you have to try it. It's amazing. I was like, fine, whatever. It's like something, something, something they have like, a, you know, like uh, that runs out really fast, uh, like a coffee. I think it was a coffee cake. That's what it was. It was a coffee cake. Nice. Uh, and I, I normally don't have a sweets really early. I like, save them for like later in the midday uh, to the afternoon before I go to bed. And, but this coffee cake was so amazing. Yeah, it was so good. I, I would go back to Cali just for that coffee cake. It was so good. Oh, yeah, it was, that's oh, not it was bad. amazing. Yeah, that's not bad. Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking loved it. Which, I mean, actually, at the moment, would you even be allowed into California? Are they doing like interstate travel or no? I, I'm not sure. I haven't even checked it, to be honest. Uh, but I do believe that they're still open for uh, traveling to Cali. But I'm not sure how their restrictions are specifically uh, place up. Uh, it, it's they're just definitely different from here in Texas, for yeah. sure. But it's like uh, that's like polar opposites, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big time. And uh, I know they got some meets coming up. Uh, I know for sure, like Record Breakers is in December, so uh, there's people traveling uh, for that. So I'm pretty sure it'll be opened up for for travel at least. But I'm not sure like the restrictions on what specifically they can or cannot do over there. Yeah, that's it's it's mad, eh? Just the difference of opinion at the moment over the last like, eighteen months of how different places have handled it. Yeah, it's, mm. who, who's right? Who's wrong? Who the fuck knows? We're all along for the ride, you know. Yeah, just this slightly irritating, man. The uh, the lack of human connection uh, over the past almost couple yeah. of years has been really shitty. Yeah. Uh, so any chance I get to go out with my friends, uh, or at least gather enough with my friends and stuff, I'm all here for uh it just works stuff it's 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 to expect people to have this kind of isolation for this long and then be okay with it oh man absolutely not uh Dude. not here for that at all no it's like it's crazy they expect people to like hey go and sit i mean like i think canada had like nine months or something of like isolation that's like how do you expect people to be okay with yeah. that like i, I want to say they, they just went back on another lockdown uh not too long ago they uh some had it went on lock I, i'm not sure they're going go on another one again but uh i know at least a few weeks ago they had uh been put on a we're just coming off another lockdown too and it's yeah it's yeah it's it's crazy man i mean we just went into another lockdown like a couple of weeks ago i mean i'm hoping it's only going to be like a couple of weeks but still like it's it gets pretty fucking old pretty quick yeah, I mean, yeah, I got, I got over it. Uh, that one, one time was enough. I, I'm over this shit, man. I, I can't stand it. I don't like it. Not here for it. Uh, I sound like I socialize with a lot of people as it is, but yeah. the very, the very minimum, <laughs> minimal socialization I do get, like, and that having that just disappear completely. Oh, that was fucking awful. That's dude. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, speaking of of that like big social powerlifting stuff obviously you met melanish and stuff was that at the cage yeah that was at the um, yeah yeah so you've done the animal cage twice three times uh so i've been there since 2016 and up until 2019 uh so we didn't have a 2020 so uh 2016 i was uh i went there in february I, I i took the spot for uh for somebody uh he ended up getting hurt and this kind of random they hit me up um, uh, Eric Schwartz hit me up and was just like, "Hey, we got a spot open. We saw that you want to be in an animal cage. 
uh, would you like to jump in? And I was like, well, fuck yeah. I said yes before I even figured out I could even go there. Uh, so I, that was my, my first appearance there. And then my first appearance as an animal athlete was 2017. So it was off that sort of cage appearance that you like built the connection and then got sponsored? Uh, uh, so they kind of been eyeing me for a little bit there. Um, uh, their photographer, uh, Per, had uh, messaged me after the LA Fit Expo. And it was like, hey, uh, you got a cool image and stuff like that, which was really, it was really random for me. It was in my request box. I almost missed it. Uh, <laughs> so I saw Per Burnell and I was like, there's no fucking way this is the guy who takes the pictures for Animal and Universal. Yeah. There's no fucking way. Read the message, saw it, I was like, wow, this is really this, the guy. Uh, forward over my information over to Animal, didn't hear anything back. Right. This happened like in January. So, uh, and then late February. Uh, like the week, almost like a week before Arnold, uh, then uh, Barry hit me up about that message and was like, hey, uh, we got a spot open, uh, you know, do that. So I took it. And um, so they kind of been like watching me or so, I, I'm assuming from them. And then um, Boss of Bosses 3 happened uh, later that year in August. Uh, and they offered up a sponsorship for one person for Animal. Uh, they guess they were really impressed by uh, just the way I carried myself through the whole meet, uh, which was a great meet for me. I was the only one who had a thousand kg total uh, at that meet, nice. and uh, it was it was nice. It was cool. It was one of the coolest meets I've ever done. Uh, there's tons. Of, Gary was there. Larry Wills, Andrew Herbert. Yeah, that uh, was a, meet that all was a big meet. Was crazy. <laughs> it was. That, was. that was a big <laughs> meet, dog. I remember that. I remember yeah. watching that and. Uh... Yeah, that was crazy because that was your first thousand kilo total. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. Sure was. It was, uh, it was my second meet in wraps. I did a uh, kind of warm up meet a uh, month or so beforehand, just to, you know, kind of get my feet wet in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a total of 2177 uh, at that point. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, it's a nice little warm up deal. Uh, got into the boss of bosses one and just everything felt super smooth that whole day. Uh, was well, one of my one of my favorite meets by far, just by the environment, the people. Uh, right, it was just it was cool to see all these uh, these people I've seen on social media and previous boss of bosses and stuff, and like they're all just sitting here, you know, shooting shit. I'm like, all right, this is cool, this is this is nice. And uh, I've been walking uh, back and forth through uh, the whole crowd and everybody kind of just chit chatting, talking to people. You know, some people the athletes have like this thing where they just gotta have to have this. Um, obscure persona and just like sit in the back and just like not talk to anybody <laughs> right yeah yeah and uh i know most of the time i don't look very approachable uh as and of itself but uh as i kind of just mingled through around everywhere and stuff talking to my family and whatnot i run into somebody who'd been following me on social media and stuff like that one of the talks so i spent a couple minutes talking to people and shit and uh just shoot shit you know just i'm just a normal guy like everybody else i, I work a normal yeah. job i train like everybody else you know, I relate to the, you know, everybody else is like, you know, as anybody should. And uh, I remember going like certain bodybuilding shows and like, you know, those guys just don't want to talk to you. And I have that feeling where, like, hey, I want to talk to this person, but they're being like a complete asshole. And I was like, I'll never be that guy. I'll never like dismiss anybody and stuff like that. I, if if you want to shoot shit for 30 minutes, I'll, I'm here to talk to you, man. I, I, don't, I don't care. And um, that's just kind of how I carry myself that whole, that whole day. You know, just in a good mood. Here I am. Uh, I'm alive doing this deal and uh, I'm just sharing this experience with all these people. So uh, I definitely don't mind talking to anybody and just <laughs> shooting shit. So, but, well, I mean, that's the thing, though, isn't it? It's, it's like, why be why be a prick? You know, like, why yeah. why not talk to people? I mean, especially because yeah. you know that these people were like, especially some of the beginners and like intermediates and stuff that have like followed you on Instagram for mm. however long and they like, they just want to, you know, you making them feel good. It should make you feel good that all these people yeah. look up to you. So, like, just enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's cool, man. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a very intense lifter, and uh, when it's time for me to turn shit on, I turn it on. So okay. I'm not sure if just somebody wants just to be an asshole just because, like, the hey, I gotta I gotta carry this persona around. I don't get me wrong, I'm an asshole when I need to be an asshole, but <laughs> you know, uh, when it's time to like, you know, chill and stuff like that, you know, just kind of relax. I, I'm I'm pretty cool and calm and and whatnot yeah when it's time for me to get ready i'm like all right cool hey guys cool good talking to you i gotta get back to back to work you know i gotta talk back in and and get back to work man so (laughs) i could spend i could spend five minutes you know 
talking to somebody to make their day, you know, help their day better and stuff like that. I came here to enjoy a show and I'm here to put on one. So uh, I can at least, least I can do is at least talk to somebody. Yeah. I mean, that that's it dog. Like, and especially like you say, like even yourself, you turned up at this meet and it was all these people that you'd seen on Instagram and you're like, Oh, actually they're fucking, they're all right. You know, like yeah. it is, I, I feel like people, like it used to just be movie celebrities and TV celebrities that like people are like, they're not real people. They just, they do their thing. But now like, you know what I mean? Like they, they yeah. don't see them as real people. Yeah. But whereas now it's like you have all these just normal people that are celebrities as such, you know, like yeah. they have thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers and, yeah. and, but they, they were just another person at the mall or whatever, like last week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Uh, it, I mean, from the time of the obsession of like my powerlifting career to now, uh, I've grown quite a bit of popularity. Uh, you know, I, I, it still just kind of feels odd, strange to me because, like, I don't consider myself a celebrity, but you know, there's <laughs> just there's the times when people treat me like that, and like, uh, I try to enjoy the moment for what it is, but I'm like, hey, man, you don't have to do all that. Like, I'm just a regular dude, man. You can just come talk to me like a normal person. And shit, but like, you know, some people just get scared or worried that you're gonna yeah. be like rude doing this stuff like that. I totally get that, but man, <laughs> uh, it's it's been especially now. I'm not sure uh if it's just as coincidences over the past few months, but I've been going to certain places around here in Austin, just running into people that have seen me off of social media, uh, like in grocery stores and shit, and like uh it's <laughs> slightly odd. I'm like, hey man, I saw you on so and so. I'm like you what? How? I don't even know who you are. I've never seen you before in my life. So, like, you know, just talking to people at yeah. grocery stores and shit and, and hearing about people, uh, like, talk about me and stuff in different states uh, from they just not even piloting related sometimes. And just like, all right, it's kind of, it's a little weird, but all right, cool. I'll, I'll take it. Whatever. It's, <laughs> it's weird, like, in the strangest places. I remember, like, yeah. last last lockdown we had, me, me and the missus, we were doing, like, a walk around the block. Right, and they still let like dairies and like like little supermarkets open. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so people could pop in and get bread and milk and shit. Mm -hmm. And we're walking past this dairy that's around the corner from our house, and this guy's coming out, and he he looks at me, and just before he gets in his car, he's like, "Hey, you're that you're that powerlifter guy, aren't you?" And I was like, <laughs> "Uh, I mean, I I do powerlifting." I was like, "I don't, I don't know if I'm that." powerlifting guy i i yeah. do powerlifting and he's like no nah, no nah, bro it's sick and i was like oh okay. <laughs> thanks bro yeah. it's so weird it's such a yeah. weird experience yeah man it's uh i'll tell you this this one story i had uh because at work i work for apple and uh oh, cool. and uh oh, i'm just, and uh i'm i'm getting back good going to uh, uh get ready to do this like this training thing with these uh this, uh, this mentor i have or whatever and uh, I'm getting off this little lunch break, and I come back, and the dude looks at his computer, looks at me, looks at his computer, looks at me, and was like, "Hey, man, are you are you sponsored by Animal or something?" And I was like, I'm like "Yeah, I was like, yeah, man, I'm a I'm a powerlifter outside of outside of this stuff." And he's like, "No shit, I just saw you on YouTube." Uh, for animal and stuff like that, I fucking love animal. He's looked at me and stuff like, "There's no fucking way." That was, ah, was cool, man. <laughs> he was all geeking out and shit in front of everyone. I was like, "Dude, yeah, all right, chill." But like, thank you, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. It was just like so random, man. And uh, yeah, I've seen people wear animal shirts there and stuff. And like uh, a couple of them, I've, I've talked to them and stuff. It's kind of cool because like it's out of nowhere. And it's just like, man, I, I I don't know what to do to do with this, but. I like it. It's cool. I like it. Yeah. Have you have you seen anyone uh, wearing the the your animal shirt, the one that you're on? Uh, not in person specifically. That wasn't like a family or friend. Uh, okay. I I have uh, people over different like states and stuff where they'll tag me in it uh, when they wear it, but uh, not specifically like in Texas that I, I've seen where uh, wear my shirt specifically. It's a limited edition run, so I couldn't imagine yeah. like everybody would have one. But nah. uh, you know, but it's cool whenever somebody like trains in and stuff like that. And I'll see it in a video, uh, and even if they don't tag, I'll random like see it like this because Instagram's algorithm. I'll see it pop up. I'm like, oh, cool! Hey, this is my shirt. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's pretty dope. That's it. I mean, it was a sick shirt. It didn't make it yeah. yet in New Zealand. I was pissed. 
like yeah, man. I, but, know, I wish they had done a, done another run but like they did this limited limited release things and fuck. i mean that's, that's cool yeah that's gonna say that's part of the thing with animal is that they do like that their marketing is, is fantastic yeah. like they yeah. do a lot of like limited release stuff yeah. you only get it if you go to like certain events like if you go to yeah. the arnold's they'll only sell it at the arnold's so it does reward people who like yeah. are on top of it you know which is yeah. cool it's cool and i do like the last uh the last few arnold's after their um after like their cage releases they'll put them online yeah. uh whatever restocks they get uh like at least last the last couple ones they've done a restock of the cage apparel uh for people who've missed it uh small limited restock runs and stuff like that and have been posted them online i thought that was pretty cool in the do yeah. because i know not everybody can make it and you know getting one of those cool animal shirts at, from the cage specifically is is definitely one of those things you want to like put in your roster but uh that's all that's the last couple ones they've they put them online which i thought was pretty cool there that's sick and they they give you guys like all the athletes and stuff personalized ones hey uh i'm not sure if all of them have gotten one i know there's a handful of, of athletes that have had their own personal ones um uh, this is like a parameter certain like something like cool or like something that uh has been like recognized that you've done they you know yeah. put you on a shirt All right so if like you're a new new guy you haven't really like uh been with them too long i can just throw you on a shirt but uh yeah. being with them for a little while uh you know being being who they represent as a brand yeah right it, it ends up you know you get you get one so uh, not everybody everybody's gotten one uh there's been one animal but uh you know they have a select few that that do and uh, I find it as a high honor uh, for sure. Uh, I can't put on one. Uh, it's definitely a it's definitely a surreal moment. Uh, you know, going that process, talking like, "Hey, we're gonna do this deal and have you on." I was like, "Fuck, all right, wow." My so, only goal, my only goal initially when I started piloting, uh, you know, was to make it to the cage. This was like a little bit even before piloting. It's like when I was doing my body and stuff. We'll just make it to the cage, just to be in the cage. I just yeah. wanted to be in the cage. You know, I didn't, it's not like I wanted to be part of animal uh, specifically, you know, which would have been a great, my only small goal was just to make it to the cage to do something cool. Yeah. All right. That was the only thing I was like, this is when I was bodybuilding and stuff like that. I was like, I just want to be in that environment. I want to feel that. And then just shit started unfolding. I, I, I fell into politics. I started doing these meets. I started meeting these people. And next thing you know, I, within a year of doing the politics, I was in the cage and I was like, wow this is this happened this is, this it is just, ridiculous yeah yeah i just man it was the coolest shit man <laughs> that it was it was something else uh I, I i i'll never forget that whole entire like inception like uh of me just training really fucking hard i did palloping by accident had so much fun with it did another meet then did another meet and then did another meet and just kept doing that for like eight months I did like six meets or so in like eight yeah. months i would say that was about six weeks i did a lot <laughs> and yeah. uh uh and i'm just like man this this is, is so so fun and i uh i ran into bj whitehead one of my uh early meets and was asked i was like hey man what's uh do they have like a thing how, how do i get to the get to the cage like there's something i can do like they have like extra spots or something like that so there's there's they're more specific but like they have uh, a specific schedule like they pick certain things out. i was like oh okay cool so i got it uh, I'll be, I'll just try to plan on going next year just to watch, uh, you know, at least try to make it out there. And then a week before, uh, the honor happened, they hit me up and was like, Hey, we got a spot open. Uh, you want to take it? I was like, Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was at work too. And I got that message and I was just like, I immediately said, uh, fuck yeah, I'll go. You're right. You know, immediately. Yeah. Damn. There I was heading up there to the animal cage. That's, it. That's all she wrote. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah. Actually, what I what I wanted to do, and uh, I just came off of doing all these meets. I, I needed a big ass break. I was like, I was not. My body was completely shot. Uh, it was just no more. I was like, I need to stop lifting strength. I go back to doing bodybuilding stuff. And uh, I was like, well, I can probably deadlift uh, right now. I was like, well, what can you do? I was like, well, I could probably, you know, I was like, I can deadlift until like I pass out. And he was like, what? He was like, all right, well, what do you want to do? I was like, well, I'll just do like 500 till, uh, you know, till I pass out or something like that. And he was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so like my event was called, it was called Rob Hall Pulls Balls Out was, was my event. And I was like, all right, that's a, that's a, that's a title for a, for a deal. So, uh, and 
this was before like I knew like how like the specific work and you get like an hour block frame to this song. So uh, it took me like three to three or four minutes to warm up. Right. I, I, I didn't time any of this, right. I, I didn't, it wasn't until the next year I got better, you know, learning this, this deal. So my entire hour block frame uh, to do this thing, my event lasted maybe by like five, seven minutes instead of <laughs> an hour. <laughs> so I warm up really fast. I put on one song and I blew through all my warm ups up to like uh, four, four or five. And I have taken like, uh, at least three, three and a half, maybe four scoops of pre-workout. Uh, right. I was so amped up and I was like, I was like, Hey, uh, I'm ready to go. They looked at me and was like, right now I was like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm warmed up. I'm ready to go. I've been, you know, ready to watch. <laughs> man, I was just <laughs> fired up and it. And, uh, uh, I was like, all right, we'll play this song and, uh, we'll get started. We'll go. So, uh, I just fucking started yanking on the damn thing until I couldn't pull it anymore. <laughs> So how many how, how many rips of 500 did you do that yet? Uh, I want to say I ended on like 20 or 21 or so. Uh, yeah, I just I just was trying to knock them all out. Yeah. I figured I was like, the faster I pull, I wanted to go to 30. Uh, I was like, the faster I pull them, it would probably be a lot, lot better. But probably should I probably should have thought about it a lot more. But like I was flying on this the plane up there. It was like, well, if I pull them really fast, I could probably get to 30 before anything bad happens to me. So I was <laughs> that was my logic. I was like, all right, well, I think this will work. So we'll try it and see. Uh, you know, so got a little yeah. better at planning later on uh, in my cage appearances. <laughs> it's that one was just like, yeah. Fuck it. That's sound logic, man. Like, that makes sense in your head. And like you say, like, yeah. you had like five minutes to think about it. Like, you'd warmed up yeah. and you're just like, fuck it. All right, let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. That, <laughs> I was trying to think, of, like, you know, you, you, you do the, the, the 225 bench press challenge, right? The, the faster you press them, the more reps you can get out, out of that oh, yeah. deal. So, in my head, I was like, this should be about the same. It'd yeah. be about the same. Yeah. Uh, well, well, yeah, let's, let's do it like that. Yeah, yeah the same logic <laughs> applies. Fuck it. Of course it does. <laughs> no, that's not, I figured that. This would work. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the so, and I mean, so what did they do for the other 53 minutes? They just sort of like played. <laughs> any, any... They got ready for it. <laughs> they just did it kind of like chill for a minute. And I just laid there on the floor for like about five minutes and shit. So I mean, laying on the floor lasted longer than my entire fucking event. So I was just like, <laughs> I was so gassed. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> oh, man, I was so winded, man. And uh, <laughs> I just uh, started chilling there. They just started getting ready for the next event, but they just kind of like uh, chill for a minute there uh, until the next one. Because <laughs> they all. They all kind of start on uh, specific hour blocks to keep that time frame going to the end of the expo. Yeah, and I was just like, "All right, well, hey, my bad. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah, I just I was ready to go, man. I was so fucking amped, just excited, uh, way too excited for for all that. You know, I just didn't even really consider uh, waiting that long. Like I did my warm ups, one thirty five, two twenty five, three fifteen, four oh five, right, and just like. <clears throat> foo, 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 and it was gone. Like I was done in a, in three minutes. Like the thought, the initial, I had made a playlist of songs uh, to play up until the main lift, right? And I didn't make it through the first song. <laughs> the first the first song was still playing. And I was like, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, you know, I went over to Higgins and was like, hey, bro, I'm ready to go. And uh, talked to the DJ. I was like, yeah, I'm ready, bro. Let's get this guy. I'm, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Then you're like, okay, I fucked this up. They're not going to invite me back. Yeah, right, this yeah, is just, the... they, they thought they were they they they, they liked it. They enjoyed it, right? Because I, I gave so much effort into that whole deal, uh, right? So uh, you can see like the passion, and, like you know, the determination I had to to do the lift for. So I, I you know, that in of itself was enough to be like, all right, cool, man, He's solid guy, right? That's dope. Nice. And then so then that was 2016, 2017. Yeah, that was that was 2016. 2017. Yeah. 2017 you did the. 2005 pound total yeah yes so yeah, yeah. 2005 pounds um for our un-american listeners is about nine ten. is that that sounds about right yeah that sounds about right yeah um so you total that in 33 34 33 seconds 33 seconds yeah that's like dude that is fucking ludicrous <laughs> like there are people yeah. at home hating you right now I, I know, man. Uh, I had, uh, so uh, there was a little group of pilots like that I worked out with stuff like in like uh, 
every New Year's like thing, they get together and they do this uh, 90 second total thing where they have a little fun and do a total in 90 seconds. I usually don't participate because like, I have some kind of like event coming on, right? Yeah. So um, the one the, right before that that year, uh, I, I did, did my training day and just did my training lifts for the week in that little uh, 90 second total thing, you know, so I could be a part of the little group everybody right so yeah uh, nice. i never really like try to like see what i could do for it because uh, i was getting ready for uh this was coming off of the boss of bosses meet going into uh this corpus christi classic uh 2017 i had uh broke the uh, uspa american record total there uh so i knew i could do these lifts fairly easy because they're basically all my warm-up lifts mm. right so like they're all warm-up stuff for me like you know openers it should be a piece of cake um i remember getting on the plane and was like i was this is going to do 2k uh but chad wesley smith had done 2k uh and, and a little bit of uh i want to say it was like 40 or so 40 seconds it was it was quick it was so quick uh and um i was thinking to myself was like uh well i got 90 seconds i should at least do five more pounds more than somebody else who's done. I don't want to tie anybody. I want to do more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so like I can at least handle five more pounds. No big deal. Uh, so I'm getting there and flying on the plane and get up to the uh, expo. And um, uh, I believe my deal was on Friday. So uh, I'm sitting there looking at all the, the weights and stuff they have there. It's not like they have a lot of 45s. They got hundreds, 45s. So I pull up a little notepad, uh, start calculating all the weights. <laughs> that was that was there. I was like, okay, we got this many 45s. I got this many hundreds. I need uh, like the hundreds on the deadlift. That's easier. The uh, forty fives on the the bench and the squat. That makes that easier. I just kind of calculated everything that needed to be out there, and then just kind of started warming up. I was like, all right, well, I got an hour to do this. Let me drag out my warm ups uh, very methodically. And then about uh, about ten minutes or so before uh, my hour was up, uh, I was like, hey, cool. This is my last warm ups and stuff like that. I'm gonna get ready to to knock this out here uh, next few minutes. Uh, so I, I, everything was just running super smooth, right? I was just like, all right, this is gonna be really cool. And uh, while I was warming up, I was like, I'm supposed to do it 90 seconds, right? That was my time frame. And in my head, I was like, just do it as fast as you can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Run through it, man. You know, just yeah. whatever, no big deal. Just fucking run through it, man. Do what you do. So uh, <laughs> uh, Dan Bell was there and shit, and he he back me for a squat. I always like watching Dan Bell lift in the cage. He's one of my favorites for sure. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> I unracked that squat and uh, fucking nailed it. Racked it, moved over to the bench. I told Jay Nero, I was like, as soon as I get my hands uh, my on the bar, just lift it up. And we're just gonna roll with it. So I got there, laid down. As soon as, he, as soon as I put my hands on it, we unracked it. Boom, put it back up. Took my belt off, got to the deadlift, and like. I had so much extra time. Like for me, it was just like moving really slow. And I was like, wow, I've got all this time to do. I literally have a whole entire almost minute full of time to do. I'm already on deadlifts. So I chopped my hands up, right? And get up there, do my little warm up deal and, and pull it and just hold it for a second and then drop. <laughs> I technically could have either did it faster or more weight. And I'm just thinking in my head when I finished, I was like, damn, I ran through that really fucking fast. And then when they told me the time for it, I was like, all right, that was pretty cool. All right, not bad. <laughs> and uh, just kind of like seeing people's faces like and the whole deal, like kind of just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Right? <laughs> it just it just happened. Like a whole hour warmed up, everything's kind of they're playing the music and so like everybody's getting ready. They mouse on the microphone and get ready to do it and whatnot. And then I just do it like that, and it was already done. Yeah. And everyone's like, damn, what the fuck just happened? And it just talked about it the entire weekend and stuff like that. I was like, damn, it feels really good to do. I came, I was finally able to do like the one cool thing I wanted to do at the end. Okay, I wanted, I did a cool fucking thing and I, I hit my goal, man. My goal from like years ago was to do something cool in the animal cage. And there it was. And I fucking did it. And I was just super excited the entire weekend. Well, yeah. I mean, a two like yeah, over two thousand pound total in thirty four <laughs> seconds like that. That is what. So wait, what? Because what were the numbers that you hit to hit that? Uh, I believe it was seven twenty five, uh, five thirty five, and then seven fifty. See, this is the thing. Seven fifty five. So the people watching, they're like, they've 
one, they've never seen these weights lifted before. Like a lot of these people, they train it like a fucking, <laughs> as an LA fit or like a planet fitness. And like, yeah. I've never seen this before. And then you're doing it in 30 seconds. Yeah. That just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you definitely would have like yeah. broken a few people's brains that day. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was cool, man. Cause uh, uh, some of the people that I talked to the year previously came back uh saw me do that deal and just i'm blown away by it right so it was it was cool after i was done man i, I talked to so many fucking people oh yeah uh, just going through like the expo and stuff like you you catch wind of it like the next day and like people stop stop me and stuff and ask for pictures and shit i was like well this is this is kind of weird uh yeah. that's a little weird feeling like this yeah Right, like, you know, by the time I left Sunday, like, you know, it had been talked about uh, quite a bit that whole weekend, and I was just kind of just super pleased uh, with it, stuff like that, and immediately was like, uh, well, before the track track, <clears throat> after that, uh, that day, there was the ABC event, uh, I had a squad like seven, uh, 725 or something, or seven, seven something, I think it was like 725 for like four in, in wraps after that, I'm still in training cycle for my next meet. Yeah. So I, I did that. It was like, okay, well, so I still have to get my training done. Uh, so I lifted with a good handful of people that I met at the cage there. <laughs> but I had to get, I had to get my training build done. Uh, and squat with them was super cool. Uh, you know, I, I talked to them uh, for a few hours at that point and uh, whatnot. And they come back almost every year to, to talk to me. And I think it's the coolest fucking thing just to have the connection. And like, man, immediately after I left and flew back, I was like, what can I fucking do better next yeah. year? Yeah. <laughs> what? How can I make this better? Yeah, um, yeah, how does, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Like you thought that was like the pinnacle, like you say, that's like the pinnacle of your animal cage career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I was just like, man, loved it. And it was like, well, how can I make this better? You know, yeah. what can I do to up the ante? Yeah. I thought about doing, doing that uh, 2k total again, but doing like 2,100 uh, or trying to do, um, uh, do it backwards uh run, go through it forward and then go through it backward uh, oh yeah right? so, yeah both ways yeah yeah, that yeah right so <laughs> I, that had been crossed my mind uh right so that like, i got a whole entire almost year to think about this whole fucking thing uh and then the uh garrett fear had suggested a uh deadlift face off whatnot and uh steve johnson had to be the the guy oh yeah uh, yeah so <laughs> Uh, I was like, well, how can I make this? But I, I didn't know how it was going to be the extent of what it was, but I wanted to do a versus with somebody at the cage. I think those are always great to do. Yeah, 100%. They're like the exciting bit, you know, like everyone wants to watch because it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's just, it's that human primal shit. You know, it's like yeah. this person versus this person who's yeah. better. It's like yeah. watching like yeah. MMA, boxing, et cetera. Like, yeah. I feel like that's one of the things that powerlifting misses is that quite oh, often yeah. that that yeah. And doesn't. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I and I and I love doing like challenges and stuff and uh, going against people. And it's one of those things I did for quite a bit was like you know, calling people out or like challenging them to a to a meet to do. And uh, one of my favorites to watch in the cage was like Higa Monster versus Pete Diesel, uh, Diesel and I doing their seeing their face off and stuff like that. Oh, I was yeah. like, I want, I want, I want that feeling because like it was just an electrifying moment to watch. Uh, yeah. Back to back, they did it twice and like um i was like okay cool this thing should be pretty awesome with with steve and uh we had a really it was really heated uh, you know, it was like a playful thing we agreed upon uh and the start but like the weeks leading up to it it just got more heated and heated <laughs> uh, up until <laughs> people, people on instagram thought you guys like hated each other man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were ready for us like fight for real. Though. Yeah, like it was, there was going to be no deadlifting. You guys were just going to punch each other over the bar, like smack yeah. them with a forty-five or something. It was it was getting intense, man. Because like uh, he's a competitive guy, and just just having that uh, that kind of nature, like two dudes like that, they're in the same kind of realm and stuff. And uh, man, getting those weeks before, even days before, I it just it had me infuriated. Oh yeah, uh, going against Steve, I was just livid having a uh, delve against this guy, and the amount of people that were uh, dismissing my talent in of itself oh, was yeah. pissing me off to the max. Oh yeah, and my entire plane ride up there, I was just heated the whole fucking time. Uh <laughs> I mean, so this is because this is this is 2018. So this is, mm -hmm. I mean, Steve had pulled 
had he pulled 900 pounds then? Yeah, 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 he pulled over 900 pounds. Yeah, he just he just pulled over like 900 pounds. Everyone's like, this guy is one of the best, best deadlifters on the planet. Like, yeah, he was the best American deadlifter at the, at the time. Yeah, uh, Rob, Rob's <laughs> like this. Rob's a fucking idiot. Like, why is he doing this? This is ridiculous. It, you you gotta to be the man. You gotta beat the man. And oh, the yeah. guy who had the best fucking deadlift had to be like, okay, this dude's got the, the heaviest deadlift. He's got the best deadlift. This dude can deadlift. So why would I not do that? Why would I not yeah. challenge the guy who's got the best best deadlift right now? Oh yeah, uh, right. So it had to happen. It had to happen. So this is, I mean, this is in my in my opinion, this is like one of the. This is one of those those fanboy moments. This is one of the like pinnacle moments of st- recent strength sports. Like the that was all people talked about all 2018. Yeah. So it was yeah. in March. March yeah, it was in March. March. So there's it, and it got publicized. I feel like that was like the main animal cage event that year as well. Yeah, like, it was definitely one of them. Uh, Milanovich to me, Milanovich was uh, was that's iconic. Uh, he don't go off his training training uh, regimen, and he did just for that uh, that deal. And watching him squat like it's like painting a fucking picture. It was just oh most yeah, beautiful thing. And yeah. he did so to me. It was, it was super impressive. Man. It was just Dan Green. Uh, I believe he pulled nine hundred belts. Oh, that's right. There that too. One. So <laughs> there was a lot of cool shit that happened uh, yeah. that weekend, man. The, uh, I, I remember when Dan put that video up of him pulling that 900 belt list and people were like, nah, his background, it doesn't count. Use his straps, doesn't count. Like, yeah. he can't deadlift. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking serious? He just yeah. pulled 900 I, pounds. Like, yeah. And off the, injury, off the injuries he had had aren't coming off of that and then doing, doing that on it, it was so impressive. Yeah. And I, I was flying when that happened. I, I had this this weird hiccup. Uh, I, I missed my initial flight, uh, just like by, like by a couple minutes. Uh, had to get on uh, a waiting flight. I finally get up there. Uh, so I would have been flying while he was doing that. And like, oh my God, it was just the most awful uh, fucking experience getting out there but watching him do it like on on, on the small like screen on was phone, yeah yeah it was dope but man i wanted to be there but uh man i, I finally got in super late uh that night and i was so I, I, the whole event just had me everything was just pissing me off to the max <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I think i got in like probably like a little after 11 almost oh. midnight and had yeah. to recomp and try to eat and drink and stuff and uh, I had to go to a little small grocery store and like buy almost like fifty dollars worth of fucking snacks and <laughs> liquids, and fuck, it was terrible. Yeah, but you know, I woke up, did a couple interviews and shit, and I was ready to go. I the calmest I'd ever been. I woke, went went to bed pissed, woke up calm. So yeah. you knew it was gonna be, you knew it was gonna be a show. That was, I, that was yeah, it. That was it. <laughs> I, I, I I'll never forget that because I. I I ran into uh, ran into somebody from BSN. Uh, this lady who was doing that deal missed her flight too. I had to get on a connecting uh, a waiting flight, and it was has been fate. These two people that were uh, supposedly supposed to board from Japan never made it on on the flight. So I'm sitting there waiting to get checked in. I was like, I need to get on this flight. I have to get there now. Uh, I don't want to miss this fucking event. And then these two random people didn't get didn't get checked in or whatnot. So me and this lady got on this deal uh right and the whole situation pissed me off but i had finally got on the right flight uh been up all day and was like all right i'm i'm still pissed i get there i land finally get to the hotel get all my snacks i eat so fucking much and it was finally just like all right bedtime i'm good, I'm good. went to bed uh woke up was gonna choose vi- i chose violence immediately <laughs> but i was so calm about it <laughs> Did my interviews and shit like that. Went down there and was just like, "All right, let's go." Uh, <laughs> just, it was it was the day. Was so, so six hundred pounds, as many reps as you can, one for one yeah. with Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so you guys obviously you get these hour time slots, yeah. 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 So what was what was the expectation? Like twenty. Uh, was- the 30 yeah 25 30 right yeah. so yeah uh i was like hey man we got an hour let's uh drag these warm-ups out uh about 25 minutes or so uh yep. we'll take our time and whatnot we'll get started about uh 30 minutes in and we should end in the you know in an hour you no know, in the, in the yep. within an hour 30 minutes yeah. you know, so that, that's reasonable and yeah and i mean 600 pounds for 30 reps is like 
fucking hell, that's ludicrous. Like that's a that's a fair number of reps. That's a fair expectation. And I man, training with Josh Bryant uh, had me ready for something like this. Uh, yep. Doing these cluster sets of, of reps with twenty second rest. Uh, I had done. I want to say someone uh, north of like six forty, six fifty. Uh, every twenty seconds, pulling a rep uh, and whatnot. Nice. And those were daunting as shit, but they were so exciting. Yep. So I thought this event was super exciting to do. Uh, right, so this is kind of like a more of an endurance deal of strength than just like you know all out strength of itself. And uh, man, it got up to it got up into the mid twenties. And one of the, the stipulations for the deal was whoever throws up, quits, uh, or like you know passes out or whatever, they lose. Yeah. Right. So we get up to like mid twenties or so, and uh, this asshole. Uh, immediately pulls the barbell as soon as I drop it down. So they told him, like, go up there and pull it as soon as I drop was, it, right? Was was it sort of like gentleman's rules, like you guys would give each other, like, 30 seconds or whatever in between? Yeah, it was, it was yeah. supposed to be a 30-second rest deal okay. uh, right now. It was initially supposed to be, like, uh, like a 30-second rest, like, after I pretty much put it down because I went first. Uh, yeah. but like, a 30-second rest deal and then kind of keep that pattern going. Yeah. Uh, but it, it wouldn't really essentially work if somebody did it faster than the other. So it was more or less like a, you give a 30 second time frame after you, uh, the person did the lift or whatever. So a little bit, a little bit of a little extra time here and there. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they were pulled faster, sometimes they weren't. So yeah. uh, it evened itself out. But like the mid 20s, man, uh, his little group was over there. Uh, you know, it seemed like it was like everybody against me. This is how it felt to me. <laughs> I, had, I had like two, uh, my back was against the cage. So you had me backed against the wall. I had two or three people. I had Higa Monster, Garrett Fear, and Dusty. Uh, they were just kind of in my corner, these three people. And then, like, this sea of people were just buying him, right? So it pissed off. I'm just pissed off. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm mad, yeah, yeah. mad just seeing this, yeah. right? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, like, this little group told him to, like, pull the bar as soon as I drop it, you know, to try to catch me off guard. But again, gas station ready over here. I was ready to fucking go. <laughs> Immediately stood up, you know, stuck up, stuck it back to him and stuff like that. Uh, if he would have kept going in that pace, if he had the conditioning for it, I would have threw up. I had been drinking so much water. I was, I was already dehydrated from like the day before, the whole deal. I didn't eat anything. Uh, so I've been chugging this water up until these 20 reps, chugging this, this fucking water. So I was <laughs> water loaded, right? And if he'd have kept going, I'd have puked. Cause I was just, I was getting to that moment. Where I just almost couldn't hold it in. Yeah. And I was just pulling the shit. And, um, I, you know, since I bucked up to him and I just kept doing it, he finally backed off and here goes my shit talking ass. Like, yeah, that's what I fucking thought. And you know, and all this <laughs> shit, <laughs> right. <laughs> just get heated for the thing. And I was, I, uh, once I get that last thing, we start resting, I turned to look at him. I was like, damn, I almost peeped on that one. <laughs> like, I almost <laughs> lost. Cause then the last rep I, I was holding in, it was just like, Oh, all right. All right. And then he finally okay. backed off, and I was like, I was like, all right, no more water for a while, no more water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah. almost that almost ruined me there. <laughs> and then that's, I mean, because that's what you guys did, what, like 10 reps like that? I think I remember seeing probably 10, yeah. 10 reps yeah, or so like that. So then yeah. you're still like mid 30s, and everyone's like, holy shit. Yeah, man, we, 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 once we got up into that 30 range and stuff like that, I was like, I was like, damn. Uh, to me, like these don't these don't feel really very difficult at all, and uh, get up to the mid thirties, just like all right, we'll probably maybe go like to mid forties or so, maybe fifty. Yeah. Then, yeah. Right? Nah. No. Nope. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> we we got up to uh, the end of the fifties, and uh, I remember uh, them asking me. Uh, like Higgin and Garrett and stuff like that. How many more you think you got in you? Uh, I was like, I'll, I was like, I'll pull another twenty. I'll pull another thirty. I don't. I'll pull until I get a hundred fucking reps. I, it does not matter to me. I'll pull until I win. <laughs> and they're just like, all right, all right, all right. So I figured, I was like, I'll at least do seventy. I do not give a fuck. Yeah. Right. So we started them sixty. <laughs> I was ready. I was like, I was like, I could. To me, I was just like, you can do another ten. Right, I was like, you can do another 10. It's just, yeah. I kept thinking, it's like, you can do another 10. Not like I can do 100 reps and think about it. Wow, it's 100 reps. So I can do another 10. I can keep doing 10. I, I was yeah. locking out another 10. Yeah. it get more difficult to the end of the 10. But like, you know, I was like, I can do this. So I, you know, pulling first was my advantage for sure. 100%. Um, that was a smart call. Uh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. More, than just, more than just a pretty face. Exactly. It set the tone on that ass. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Right, so uh, I knew where if if anything, if 
he, you know, gave up first. I had the advantage. I had one more than him. Yeah. Right. So, and that's what ended up initially happening. Um, I pulled the 63rd rep uh, and he had done 62. So I pulled the 63rd rep and he had torn his hands up and cut them all, cut the skin off him by then. Dude, and his, <laughs> oh, his hands were a mess. And mine were starting to tear up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I got man hands. So like they were fine. <laughs> and, and, and uh, he was getting blood on the bar. I was just like, you know, shit talking about that and whatnot. And so he's getting up there and he cut all the skin off his hands and was trying. And uh, it didn't budge. The 63rd one from him didn't budge. And uh, you can see on the video, I have a sigh of relief, right? I was like, oh, finally. Yes. I was like, done. finally, right? Yeah. I was like, finally. But then I don't know why, but he, I immediately was like, pick that shit the fuck up and let's keep going. Right? So I was yelling at him to pick it up. I was just not done. I was just like, not done. I sighed and was like, okay, no, keep going. I want to make it to 70 now at this point. All right, because now it's like a point to prove, like, nobody's done this. Like, let's keep fucking going. And like, he kept trying to pull it and stuff like that, and it didn't budge. Uh, and I was like, all right, cool. Uh, I looked over to Eric uh, Schwartz and was like, he was like, uh, they kept, Higgin was like, they, let's do one more and whatnot. Do one more, do one more. Uh, so I walked over to Higgin, uh, to Eric and was like, all right, I'm going to do two more. Right, it's not one more, do two more. Yeah, yeah, always, always. <laughs> I'll do two more. And uh, and because I want to end on like an even number, 65 was like a better number than 64, like it just sounded better. 100%. So, uh, so I was like, I'm gonna do two more, and you know, so I ended up doing three more than he did. And this is kind of like it's like more like a nail in a coffin. I had been so pissed the entire week, right? His, his cronies had been like fucking antagonizing me all week, yeah. And they're just like, all right, I did this, and I did, yeah, I did one for me and one for you, Fuck all y'all, and I just, <laughs> I, I just had to. I just had to. He cheered me on doing the last last two and stuff like that. We bro hooked it out and stuff like and whatnot. So it was a cool dude after that. Uh, man, it was it was it was incredible. It was the most electrifying thing I've ever been a part of. Uh, I never forget those moments for sure. That's like so. It ended up going for what an hour and a half. Uh, about an hour and twenty something minutes, almost an hour and a half. So. Oh. <laughs> But they, yeah. they, couldn't, they couldn't be mad because it's yes. fucking ludicrous. Yeah, and like you know, uh, I super, I was super sorry for you know Andrew Herbert afterwards. You know, just cutting into his time. Uh, I didn't want to do all that and stuff like that. You know, but you know he he'd been warming up on the side. You know, by the deal. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to take any time away from anybody. Uh, you know, but it, they didn't want to stop us because it was just something that they've never seen before. It was just like such a magical moment. You couldn't be like. All right, well, that's enough. Draw. That's it. It's yeah. like you kind of no needed to have a clear winner at that point. So. Yeah, no, no one was going to take a draw. You guys would have been yeah. yeah, so I, I think, you know, the, uh, much love to Animal and stuff like that for allowing us to keep continuing that event. Uh, because, like I said, you know, uh, it, you don't want to cut to anybody else's time for sure. That, that's, that's their spotlight and time frame. Uh, and then they just let it, let us do that here. And um, Andrew was super cool about it. He had been warming up on the side. So um, it it ended up in the right spot. And like, man, it was just it the most magical moment could have happened. It happened. And I, I, I'm forever thankful for having that opportunity for sure. Because uh, Herbie was squatting 700 for reps, was he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, he could, reps, so, yeah. He, so he could warm up on the side. Like, yeah. And yeah. Do his I'd ca- yeah. Yeah. I caught a glimpse of him warming up and stuff uh, towards the end of that deal. Uh, and I, I was like, uh, uh, asking like Garrett, he'd been recording and stuff. Like, I was like, I was like, how much time has gone by? And he was like, it's been about like an hour and 10 minutes. And so I was like, what? And it was getting up to almost an hour and 20 minutes. And she, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, that went by really long. I, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it had been going on that long. Uh, and then when I asked him, so like, how long has it been? He's like, oh. I was like, God damn. All right, well, fuck. Dude, that, that's a long time to be like pulling. <laughs> like usually, like you say, like a deadlift workout is like 20 yeah. minutes, if that, yeah. and you, you'll do like a couple of sets and that's it. Yeah. So then yeah, obviously, <laughs> this, is, this is like one of the most ludicrous things I've heard of afterwards. So you thought you'd just strain something in your lower back. Yeah, I, I got a, I feel like I had a cramp in my lower yeah. back. Yeah. Right. So just like my back started cramping up. So I started chilling. I was yeah. trying to eat, but but at the same time, everyone wanted to talk to me and stuff like that. So 
wanted to talk to people and stuff like that. And I was chugging uh, all these fluids. And I, wanted, I, had, I had some food there. Somebody stole it. They didn't give it to me. Uh, I didn't get to eat it. I just, I just, I was like, all right, well, I need to stretch my back out real quick. So I laid it on the ground, uh, trying to stretch it out. Then I couldn't get back up. And I was like, all right, this is fucking weird. Every time I try to move it, it cramp up even more. I was like, I was like, wow, this isn't, this doesn't feel very good at all. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. It, it just started getting worse. It just, I get to the point where like, I couldn't pick my legs up underneath me to stand up. They, I was like, I, I, like, I got to get on my flight. I got to get out of here. I gotta go back home. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I gotta leave, man. I go. And uh, they got the paramedics and stuff like that to come check me out. Uh, and it didn't really seem like anything was wrong. Well, that's, I mean, there was some fluid in my lower back, and there always usually is uh, in that manner when I'm, when I'm deadlifting or doing any kind of like lower back stuff. And um, they was like, all right, well, if you can get up, then we'll let you go. I was like, all right, cool. So I did all the willpower I had, got on my hands, <laughs> and I literally tried so fucking hard. It was just like, uh, it didn't go anywhere and i was just like okay. all right fine i'll, I'll go with you because yeah. just because <laughs> all right i don't want to but i'm gonna do it anyway yeah because i want to yeah don't, don't <laughs> take this as a win for you yeah so, you. yeah fuck off guys I, i'm gonna go <laughs> this thing we're just gonna go check this thing out real quick you know so yeah. I, i'm yeah fuck off yeah <laughs> <laughs> I just did lift it fucking 600 pounds of 65 yeah. reps. Get out of my face. Yeah, yeah. fuck off. Right now, I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was ready to like, uh, you know, just kind of chill and just enjoy my moment. And then yeah. could enjoy it. Yeah, I didn't get to enjoy it for a while there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So then you end up going to the hospital. Yeah, I went to Ohio's hospital. Yeah. Uh, they should have gave me an IV. They didn't. Uh, they should have checked my blood. They didn't. Uh, they just gave me painkillers um right they stabbed my hand to give me an iv uh never did to left me in this room i'm glad i have got a couple friends there uh at this point i was in excruciating pain yeah. uh this is the most agony i've ever felt i was not sure why i was just doing this uh right so they gave me more pain pillar painkillers uh, that made it worse all right so it started like fucking with my liver uh and my kidneys were already fucked at that yeah. point so now my liver is getting fucked uh right so uh they uh they let me go because, like, my friends were like, hey, if you guys aren't going to treat him, uh, just let him go, uh, right, so he can go get some help. Uh, so I, I got my prescription painkillers, uh, which was the worst. I ate those like candy, right, so I oh, could fucking yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, get on this excruciating plane ride back home, yeah. uh, which was awful. I got to stand on my first flight because sitting was too, too painful. I got to lay down in the back on the first flight, right, so – uh, I got laid lay down the, my connecting flight. I didn't have to get off the plane, luckily. Uh, but the, the flight from there, uh, which I think was like Detroit back to Austin. Uh, look, my guy, like we had turbulence and shit. I had to sit down <laughs> almost three something hours in excruciating pain. I just lay, I just try to like lean forward and try to stretch it out as best as possible. I was most excruciating pain ever. I just had to sit there in between these two people in a small ass seat and not move. Uh, I tried to stand, which was helping, right? I fell asleep standing at some point uh, on the other flight, but this stuff, I had to sit for the most of the flight. Uh, they wouldn't let me wouldn't let me lay down. They were taking so long doing the, like, passing all these fucking drinks out and shit. I was highly pissed. Finally get that deal. I had to, you know, get wheelchaired out because uh, I couldn't really specifically walk very, uh, very much at all. <laughs> get wheelchaired out the fucking plane all the way to the front. So I went from being in this high-ass status to immediately – immediately yeah. getting shoved in the yeah. dirt man facing the dirt yeah. <laughs> it had to drive an hour home uh right so i'm sitting there uh like trying to like okay maybe if i go to sleep i'll probably be okay and whatnot i couldn't lay down i, I went and lay down on the floor figured i just need to like you know just kind of get comfortable a little bit yeah uh, I, I could not do that whatsoever so i was like i need to go to the emergency room at least have this take a look at because i'm in excruciating pain and it's lasting way longer than it should Hundred um, percent. So I uh, got there uh, early. I was at maybe like two o'clock in the morning on Monday uh, for the ER, which yeah. made me wait. I'd, I'd been waiting there for so fucking long, uh, <laughs> right? And I finally get seen. To emergency room, my ass. I finally get seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like didn't think it was like an emergency. Like I like I was literally dying at this point. Yeah, um, like, if, like actually dying. You literally at like, this point, I was literally almost I almost kicked the bucket. Yeah. Uh, 
And if it had been a few more hours, if I had just, if I didn't make the decision to go to the emergency, I would have been, I'd have been done the next day. Uh, so uh, I finally get in there. It was a, hey, doc, been looking at this deal, talked to a couple people, pretty sure I have rhabdo. Uh, my urine, he was like, why is that? So I, I was like, my urine is Coke brown, it's super thick and syrupy. Uh, that's not right. <laughs> That's I'm super dehydrated. Right. And that's yeah. definitely not right. I did this event here. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I have rhabdo. Uh, so they took my blood, came back, and was like, yeah, your CPK level is like 41,000 plus. Okay. Uh, just, just, just for <laughs> reference for people. So if it's 41,000, what's the normal range? Like sub 1,000? Uh, like, like a few hundred, maybe. Like, like three, 500. <laughs> Yeah, at the most, like it should be, it shouldn't even be that high. It should be normally like around a couple hundred, maybe three hundred or so for someone who trains. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, <laughs> when it comes back at like five hundred, they're like, okay, what have you done? And you're like, I've trained like yesterday and right. today, and they're like, okay, but yeah. forty one thousand, forty one thousand plus, and like, that's fucked. He was like, yeah, it's like the equivalent of a small car crash, right? So like, if you'd been waiting a little longer, you'd probably end up on dialysis or even worse, dead. Uh, at that point so I was like good to know man appreciate it so they put me all these uh, <laughs> IV fluids and uh, gave me these um, muscle relaxers that were good for my uh, liver at least better yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I also had a slight uh, you know uh, liver damage and whatnot because of the previous painkillers uh, yeah. so like so no doubt like so like just for anyone that's listening that doesn't know rhabdomyelosis is basically like when your body breaks down protein faster than it like it's breaking down protein too fast faster yeah. the, than you the, can. the myoglobin uh leaks out of your kidneys uh more yeah. or less so right. instead of it instead of it processing it so you can recover and whatnot it over flooded and leaked out of my kidneys into my lower back and, and all it. that yeah and then and then they added painkillers on top on of top that of <laughs> which yeah. is like again your body can't process what it's already got going on yeah. let alone what you're adding to it yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I loved it. Absolutely. It was great. But great. So I stayed in the hospital for about five, five and a half days or so. <laughs> Finally got released on Friday. Uh, what What did they, did you, like, what was your CPK levels when you got released? Were they, like, were, were they like reasonable or were they still disgusting? Absolutely not, sir. They were 31 <laughs> at least in, in the 30,000 still. How so did like, they let you go? I, look, I don't, I'm not even actually sure, to be honest. Uh, so they gave me, they gave me all these fluids to get the, to get it down. And it was still in the 30 thousands. And, but I had been doing better. Yeah. Uh, it's like the, the midweek, it was the worst. And then uh, by the end of the week, they were like, okay, so Thursday, like, hey, they've gone down quite a bit. Uh, they go down uh, a little bit more. We'll be able to release you tomorrow, uh, you know, Friday. So yeah. Um, Morning wise, it was like, okay, they're still a little, little high. So it got down a little bit lower towards uh, midday, towards the afternoon, and whatnot. Uh, still in the 30,000. It's like, okay, cool. We're going to release you and whatnot. You just need to drink a lot of fluids and stuff like that. Don't do any activity. Uh, I was like, all right, cool. So uh, I finally got released on that, just chugged a bunch of uh, Gatorades and stuff. And I couldn't eat anything uh, yeah. except for maybe like Jello and like ramen. Ramen was easy to, to put down. Yeah. Uh, right. So I try to take off the next week or so. And I had like checkups to do for my uh, doctor uh, with Apple and whatnot and uh, told them about what happened. So, so they checked it out and uh, I was to not work out so that way it could be, so it could get better. Yeah. I want to say maybe about a week and a half, almost two weeks after that, I'd kind of gotten back in the gym. I want to say at least a week after I would release, I was kind of in the gym working around. I just wanted to see what I could do right yeah. so like i went in there doing stuff and like once it started getting painful i was like all right cool i'm, gonna, I'm out I'm right done. so like yeah. i go to these doctor checkups it was still going down so i figured i wasn't in the wrong but <laughs> i shouldn't have been training and uh, i went to the checkups and whatnot and was like all right uh cool so what's it at now and so it got down to i think after a couple weeks it was down to mid 20s and then uh about a month or so uh, later it had been down to, uh, around a thousand or so. Nice. Uh, so it gone, I, I, I chugged as much fluid as, as possible. So yeah. training. So it's kind of a slower process, but, uh, about four weeks later after whatnot, uh, they were about in a thousand range and stuff like that. He was like, all right, cool. I think you're good to go. Uh, just keep, you know, uh, keep doing your rest and whatnot. 
Little did everybody know, uh, four weeks later, I was squatting eight something again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I had already been training, got my squat back up, went from, you know, start back over 135 again. Yeah. Uh, you know, after that deal, uh, after a couple months after the Raptor thing, was back into low 800 squatting again. And then fucking tore my knee in half. Uh, right. So I was like, yeah, cool. I'm back. I'm good. Good oh, to go. Yeah. And, and then, then I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm not. Immediately. Fuck. Yeah, I was oh, I was damn. I was more pissed about missing boss of bosses than yeah. the injury itself because like I was like I right, cool I'm gonna go I'm about to go do a meet I'm ready to go uh, I just got done doing this rabdo shit fuck all that uh, I need to go do this total and get this fucking total where it's supposed to be I haven't had a, a big total in a while I needed yeah. to put up another big total and that happened. Fuck <laughs> the I mean yeah so 2018 was was a was a saga for you it wasn't yeah, it, fuck it, it wasn't yeah. the year yeah it was not it i was <laughs> i was man i was the start of the year i was like yeah i've got i, I know i'm gonna hit this i'm gonna do this blah blah i had specific plans that need to be done at that point right because okay. i want not only is like the total wise i wanted to call out certain people and be like all right oh, yeah. let's go let's go do this matchup and shit i want to see uh what i'm capable of Right, yeah. being a, being able to go against somebody. That's my that was my plan was to do that. Was 100%. to post post up a big total uh that was worthy enough to challenge certain people and then go for the gusto uh you know against that person, against these people. I mean, and that because that, that was the thing you'd already done it with Steve. So you're like, right, yeah. well, I want to do it for bench with someone else or do like a total with someone else or yeah. w- whatever it may be. But and so then Obviously, you've been coming back from that, done a couple of comps. Yeah, I got a year later. Uh, well, it was four months, uh, four months after the knee surgery, I was cleared uh, to return to activity. Nice. Uh, so by December of 2018, I was cleared. Starting January, started to uh, train a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, and whatnot. Uh, Got into the cage again, did a small little uh, lifting medley there. Uh, June was, not June, August, uh, Boss of Bosses, uh, five, I believe, was the time. So uh, been working all this deal all the way up to recount my squat back up mm-hmm. and be able to, within a year, be able to compete again. So I, I made it, I did it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't PR my squat uh, like I wanted to, but I was able to, to tie it. I squat a 782. Nice. Uh, at the meet, <laughs> which was uh, it was a cool. Okay, cool. I made it back. Uh, you know, I was in the environment and stuff like that. I was able to uh, build my squat back up within a year, back up to that point of my sleeved squat. So nice. uh, I was happy about that. I was like, okay, I need to get back to work. Uh, and that's I need to get get this moving along and whatnot. Uh, so it took about a year to get back into the swing of things, uh, more or less, trying to get that done. Uh, and then um, I wanted to do another comp, but I thought I figured I need to uh, keep this. I still had a little bit of a hip shift and I still a little bit more uh, cautiousness of the, the knee, and it was still sore. For the most part, that's why I didn't go for 800 at the meet. Uh, it was just really sore uh, doing those attempts. So I, I called it and went to 782 uh, on that because my, my second attempt was a really grinder for me. Mm. Uh, and I was like, uh, my knee goes really sore. So I'm like, all right, 782 should be okay. So we did that instead. And then uh, my next comp wasn't until next June. Uh, so uh, I ran into a small tweak in my lower back uh, in 2020 in January. Uh, this is also, I had somewhat of a tweak before Boss of Bosses due to a chiropractor that I saw a week oh. before, which um, yeah. I, I really couldn't walk very well uh, that entire week. Uh, but I recovered enough to be like, all right, fuck it, it doesn't bother me enough to to quit the meet. And I flew down there, whatnot, it was excruciating enough. But I woke up during meet day and was like, all right, I'm good, fine enough. Yeah. Right, so... Uh, that could be, I've been working on that and whatnot. That chiropractor I no longer talk to, and he's also I was gonna no say, longer with. Fuck that. That's it. Yeah, he rushed. He rushed my uh, he rushed my adjustment and fucked me all up. Um, so uh, although I had that small tweak, it didn't really bother me, but it was still kind of lingering there. So I'm working on that. So like January had kind of been like, 
uh, on and off, and it tweaked a little more. Just I started to pull a sumo. It just I just had to tweak a little more. Nice. Uh, just just doing sumo uh, a deadlift session, and uh, I had been geared to do this big event with Animal again, a team event. Uh, it's supposed to be my team, Team Savage versus Team Steffi Cohen. Uh, and like a team oh, of selected, selected I people. I remember seeing that. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Woo! It's uh, it, it'd been something that they, they talked about and got me uh, into uh, because somebody else uh, didn't want to do the deal uh, yep. and whatnot. So I was like, I'll do it. I was going to do another fucking cool lift thing anyway, right? So yeah, cool. uh, I was like, All right, cool. I'll be, be a part of this deal uh whatnot. So uh, I heard about the team that was, uh, that she had been, that she gathered and they changed the rules uh, when they talked to me about it. I was like, all right, well, you got to find somebody who can do squat, a high bar squat, a low bar squat, a bench press, uh, sumo deadlift and conventional deadlift. All right. Right. That's the team. The team's got to be, those are the selected deal. And then her team had been literally every best person who, who done all those lifts. <laughs> right. They were, I was like, I was like, really? This is what you, this is, okay. It was like this, this is what you, this is what you want to put me in. All right, fine. So I started trying to recruit people and I had a pretty stacked team uh, of people that I figured would at least challenge enough to be close enough. And my person I was supposed to go against uh, doing conventional deadlift was Chris Weist. Oh yeah. That fucking, <laughs> that, dude, that guy's fucking huge. Why, why do I do these things? Why do I do these things? The, the, the next dude who did, who pulled the, the American uh, deadlift record after yeah. Steve Johnson, Chris yeah. Weist, like, yeah. whoa what is going through this guy what is going through my head right so like why would you do this so i i talked to him about it and i that was my event i was like um i placed everybody up in the right spots to like at least kind of be close enough to where uh i ended up having kayla woodlum uh he's supposed to go against like jamal browner i think one of the sumo right so i was like there's gonna be at least close enough with the people that i picked that had logan chapman versus yeah. dan dan bell yeah um and then i want to say uh Christy Hawkins was against Briani. Oh, and yeah. then I had uh I had uh this lady Tracy. She was a bench, I, she picked for my, my bench press. I was like, well, Steffi's gonna pick something, and like these are the people she has to put in these areas because that's what they're good at. So she's gotta take uh something like a squat or a bench press. And I had Christy Hawkins and I had Tracy. Uh Tracy was one of those ones, she benched like three something. Cool. She's a phenomenal bench presser. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, God damn it. So I talked to her, right? So I had her and uh, Christy Hawkins was, a, she's a damn beast. So either oh, squat yeah. or bench press, any lift I put her in, she's going to kill anybody yeah, over she's there. Fine. So, she handles herself, whatever. Exactly. So I was like, I'm like, I'm put Christy against Briani. So more like, she's more likely going to be the choice, probably for squats. And talk to Christy. She, I think she's going to squat like six something. She was ready to squat like six something. I was like, we'll be fine. We'll be in enough lead. Like, you know, we'll be enough like tire or something by then, by bench press and whatnot. Uh, so like Stephanie got to do bench press at least or something. And, uh, at least Jamal doing sumo and then, uh, Chris Weiss and whatnot. <laughs> so, um, I'll guess I'll take conventional and I tweet my back. Right. So, yeah. uh, I was just like, I can't go against Jamal. That's not going to work. I can't pull sumo like that, but I can pull conventional. Even if I'm hurt, I can still pull it. I'll just suffer for it. Right, so I can at least close in the gap somewhat better on conventional. So that was the, the team plan. It never yeah. happened. I thought it was gonna be pretty cool. So skipped all that. COVID happened, right? So yeah. that never fucking happened. Yeah. Uh, and then got back into training for the next beat in June, uh, which I finally been able to get my squat where back where it should. I didn't have the hip shift anymore. The knee wasn't sore doing squats. Nice. Like I want to say like three weeks before the meet. Like this all just started clicking. I was like, damn, I'm finally back where I need to. Uh, I ended up squatting uh, 804 at beach. I was going to do a little conservative, warm up meat. Uh, I started warming up and I was like, I was like, my last goal that I started for way before powerlifting was to squat 800 pounds in sleeves. I'd done it in wraps and all that stuff. I'd done all these big fucking lifts and whatnot. The only one thing I didn't do because of the, the rabbit on the knee, uh, knee surgery was to squat 800 pounds in sleeves. So I was like, uh, I could do... Uh, I think 799 was my initial, uh, my attempt selection I had yeah. based off my training. And I was like, that's horseshit. Cause the that's kilos, gross. I was like, that's fucking horseshit. Yeah. So I, I took my plan opener, took my plan second and they moved so fucking well. Uh, talking to one of buddy of mine, Sean, uh, I was like, I was like, bro, 799 is a kilo attempt. I don't want to do this cause I'll not have 800 pounds. I'll never live myself. 
Uh, <laughs> after the second attempt, if it looks fucking good, let me know. And uh, I'm going to go this 804. Uh, it fucking flew. And I immediately was like, all right, bro, let's do this 804. Fuck it. Let's go for it. Uh, it was the cleanest fucking squad I've ever had. Uh, man, it was just immaculate. And I just, I nailed it. It was so fucking ecstatic. That was the one thing I needed to do. I finally was able to complete that little last goal <laughs> when nice. I started. It was like, fuck yeah, man. And uh, I just ended up having like a cool meet the rest of the deal and shit like that. And it'll chill me. Rode that way. Good, good to get back. Yeah, good good to get back in and do a little swing of things. Off the little hiccup from the little back tweak and whatnot. I pulled 725 uh, sumo, which, you know, grand scheme of things, if I pulled conventional, I probably could have pulled 800. But I stuck to doing the sumo because I... I started with it. I wanted to finish with it. And yeah, this meet was just like a little, yeah, yeah. Just stick to it. Yeah. Right, so I ended up with 725, my opener and stuff like that. I just fell on my, uh, I hit, I hitched my second and then uh, I fell backward on my, on my last one. So it's like, all right, well, whatever. Uh, cool. I did it. I'm back in the game. I feel great. This is the first time I felt, felt great in years now at this point. Yeah. Right. Since 2018. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, was, I was just, I was just so happy. I was like, I did a, finally did a meet. I feel great for um i didn't feel like a train hit me after the meet and i was like, all right cool i'm better i'm ready to get back in the get back to work and then had one of the best training cycles i had in a long time again and then meet happened fuck all. nice no good yeah yeah so um i, I had a bunch of prs man like, especially like the bench uh my dealer was back up i pulled 765 conventional again super clean nice. uh, so i knew i was like i was like i can pull low eights mid eights easy um uh, the squat was the best part of my training cycle. Got back into the soft suit again, uh, you know, the single ply suit. Uh, hit a thousand three. Yeah, thousand pounds, man. That's man, sick. I just it was, it was an RPE day, so uh, you know, I was like uh, thinking to myself as the training had been progressing. I was like, I was like, I can hit a thousand pounds. I can fucking do this. Yeah. So I got into that deal. Had a couple of people you know wrap me up and whatnot, spot me. Derek, this is the way uh, he came back. He came down from Houston, trained me for a couple of those squat sessions. Nice. And that was the big one. And uh, man, I hit that thousand three. Uh, I was fucking ecstatic. I was like, God damn it! It felt <laughs> amazing. I had it on my back. It just felt fucking amazing. I, I nailed it. Right, and then a couple of weeks later, I went back to uh, do it in wraps by itself. And then did the 903. Derek came down again. It's a great training partner. Fuck, great dude all around. And uh, the excitement we share when we fucking train is just out of control. So uh, we got to that. Uh, I initially went to 820, 820. Uh, jumped up to uh, 880, right? So uh, that was a that was an initial PR, 881 or whatever. That was a PR. Yeah. Uh, jumped up to yeah. that. Yeah. Jumped up to that. That was a big PR, right? But it moved so fast, instead of it being my RP9, it was more like a seven and a half, eight. It was fucking fast. So I was like, I was like let me just coast up another you know, handful of pounds. It should be fine, right? So uh, let's do 903. That's a good number. 903 is great. <laughs> uh, right? So I called it then. I probably could have squatted 950 that day. Uh, but <laughs> I called it then. I was like, this, I, this is a good number to end on. And stuff like that. I just hit another PR. I don't need to be greedy. Cool, let's just call it here. And yeah. man, it was I was ecstatic. I was ready to get to that meet. I was I was definitely ready to squat nine something at that meeting, you know, do like 945, 950, uh, did something big and, and pull and whatnot, but yeah, it wasn't in the cards. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. That was it. It's it's tough. It's one of those things that like no matter how like dialed in you feel, like you say, like you feel good, training's gone a hundred percent well, and then bang, something fucks you up you know like you know that's not my own fault for uh trying to do that water cut you know i wanted to be competitive in the 308 night. it was like that that deal is normally something I, I preach not to do yeah, yeah but i yeah. i i yeah. done a water cut i done a water cut for the the 804 squat i did a water cut for that it was that's about the same uh right so i did it then i felt great the my meat went fucking great i squatted great everything went fine this one just was not it's not here for me so um Granted, water cuts are great, but as far as me trying to do that ever again, I would I wouldn't do it ever again. I don't recommend people doing it. Uh, what not? Uh, better to train in the in the environments you lift in. So, oh yeah. Uh, if I'm gonna be three thirty at that point, I'll just stay being three thirty, or I can just stop being a fat ass, drop the thirty <laughs> pounds, train it train at three ten yeah, like yeah, I yeah. was before. Train at three ten, drop a couple pounds for the weigh in by you know not eating breakfast and then fucking have a, a, a way better day. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I should do that. That's, that's the better option. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes people are just hard headed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, so, so then, yeah, what's what's next? You, you go in supers or are you going to try and stay 308, hit those records? Uh, I mean, uh, right now I'm just going to stay retired. Man. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> retired for the time being. Uh, we're going to just uh, at least work on me getting back into a normal regiment at yeah, least. 100%. Uh, you know, I've uh, been dropping quite a bit of weight uh, down to like round three, 302s or so, uh, nice. 305s, whatnot. Nice. Uh, so I already feel better dropping that 30 pounds, uh, and now it's just been off, uh, try to drop a few more, probably like another 20 or so, uh, try to stay in that, that range. That's when I felt like I was like, I felt the best, uh, when I was training was around like 295 or so, but I figure if I get down to like 280 and whatnot, I can at least give my heart a break for a while. Yeah, Cause I've been yeah. so heavy. Yeah, for so long, I uh, at least give my heart a break for a while and uh, get back into a normal swing of things, uh, train and then just kind of see where I'm at. Uh, if it's if it's in the cards for me, it's in the cards. But yeah, uh, if it's not, then it's not. I've done a lot of cool things now at this point. I, I feel somewhat cool about where I'm at. I don't feel satisfied completely, but no. I at least feel cool enough. Of like, OK, cool. I've got uh, the Rob Hall Classic where I can give back to the community. I am able to be in the forefront of the community and talk to people and share my experiences, uh, sh- share what uh, I recommend not to do, you know, <laughs> stay, stay away from kind of things, you know, uh, give some guidance to people, be a mentor to a couple of people. Um, like right now, uh, you know, uh, as best I can be, I try to be uh, a mentor to Derek. Uh, I see a lot of myself in him. He is an incredible lifter, really young guy. He's definitely got a, a lot of uh, good lifts ahead of him. Uh, so I try to uh, at least guide him to not do what I did and be better <laughs> than I was, right? So uh, the best I can do, give back and whatnot. And that's one of the things I, I gravitated towards him when I first met him um, at the 804 school meet. I talked a bunch of shit to him too, so. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> I can I can picture you guys training together. It would just be fucking like it, man, carnage it's, it's all the time. Every time we get together, man, it's just a it's just combative uh, all the time. And I, uh, and I live for it. It's good, man. Good energy. I, good energy. I feel like it's it, that's part of like being in a maybe like a powerlifting gym or a powerlifting like crew is like if people looked at it from because it was the same with me and the boys and like the little group that we trained that got around us. Like if someone from outside of that group came in, people would you would they would think that you hated each other. Like yeah. there's not a nice word said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we just we we antagonize each other back and forth, and who's who's better, who's whatnot, who's stronger, right? And like currently right now, I still have a bigger total. You know, and it, it's old. Nice. It's old. I, have yeah. to, I reiterate, hey man, because uh, he had a great meet. He. Uh, he uh, totaled twenty two thirty four. Yeah, 22, man. Twenty two thirty. That's 32. huge, dog. Like. Yeah. Right. And but he didn't pull out five more pounds to either time or beat me. So now I'm never gonna let him let him live it down until he no. does. No. And, you know, he's like, I, I outsquatted you. I was like, that's irrelevant. I am still stronger than you. This I told him. Yeah. yeah this right. Is <laughs> this is uh, total. Still, exactly. You shouldn't beat my total from like 2017. So I don't yeah. understand. Or where you really getting this shit from me? Yeah. <laughs> See, he's like, but I squatted more. I was like, doesn't matter. And I pulled more. Doesn't matter. Your bench press is atrocious. And we, we yeah. go back and forth. <laughs> <But> these, <laughs> you know these things and shit like that. I was like, he told me when he when he hit his uh, his last pull and was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. I was like, damn, twenty two thirty two. That's cute. And it was like, was it? What do you mean? I was like, wow. I was like, you couldn't you couldn't muster six more pounds to beat me. You had to do five pounds. Wow, dude. I was like, seriously. That's bullshit. <laughs> that was that digging it. I still give him shit for that, man. The, uh, so you could have you could have been like, yeah, wow, I'm better than Rob Hall. You could have been you could have been doing this to me this yeah. entire time. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I was like, five pounds though. Five pounds, really? Come you on, man. That. You're better than yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I mean it, was, it just pissed him off even more. So I yeah, love it. T- top it off he was a 242 so you're bigger than him yeah, as well yeah exactly so, yeah, was, he tried, he's like well i'm bigger than you i was like you're definitely not stopping every time we take pictures it looks like <laughs> i'm taking a picture next to a child and we just go back and forth <laughs> yeah, I, I love it man so the more i can push him to, to be better the, uh, the more i'm gonna do that man he, he's gonna be he's one of the best of all time for sure and i'm oh, looking yeah. forward to seeing it i love it i i 
I've been I've been in touch with him. We're going to get him on the podcast at some stage. Oh nice! Because nice. he, um, yeah, man, he seems like an absolute character, and like <laughs> yeah. just just a just a good dude, just a yeah. good dude who's like, yeah. but then he's strong as fuck as well. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's crazy that he's so young, like yeah. where he's going to end up. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely see him. Uh, I'm hoping he can get uh, into a meet against Yuri uh, at some point. Uh, I know he's going to. Uh, get to that number one spot here uh, soon. And then I'm hoping he can get into a meet with Yuri. Uh, I oh, think yeah. just having watched them go back and forth. It's truly right now, I mean, this, the classes and the challenging, the challenging of the people has been lackluster, uh, especially since I, I haven't been around either. Uh, I know there's been other people too that have been disappeared off of all, as well that have had the same kind of stature of one of challenge people and whatnot. Uh, but it's just been lackluster and like in excitement uh, as of the last few years. And uh, yeah. I enjoy uh, Derek's energy because I, like I said, I see a lot of myself in him and the amount of, uh, he has a lot of respect for people who are strong, like I do, but uh, not here for the talking, here to put up or shut up kind of yeah. thing, right? So, um, you know, getting under people's uh, skin is always <laughs> always a fun. Gives a little bit of uh, enticement to the meat itself. Some people can't handle it, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, get into well, these things. I mean, yeah, he tried. He tried that with fucking what's his name, Joe, yeah, and then he, uh, and then got kicked out, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll he'll tell you that deal on his own. Yeah, but that's uh, so good. That's so good. Uh, you know, you get under people's skin and whatnot uh, to an extent. You know, uh, I enjoy it. I I would I challenge people. I've had this whole deal. My inception of politics was just uh, you know going back and forth in front of people and stuff like that, making disagreements. All right, we don't we don't agree. Let's you know do this deal on the platform and whatnot. Um, I had a couple misplaced of, of people that I didn't get to didn't get to go up against. They they either uh, had something come up or back out or whatnot. Uh, and there's people that I still would like to challenge uh, and whatnot, but yeah, it's all going to kind of fall just to see where it lays. But see what uh, happens. Yeah, we're just going to have to see what happens. Just not. Uh, I don't have the same enthusiasm as I had uh, years ago uh, doing those goals, mainly because of the type of injury it is, and I'd rather avoid another injury. Oh, so yeah. if I can safely do what I want to do, sure, but. Um, this is a squat thing that kind of bothers me most uh, is to that amount of weight on my back, on my shoulders specifically. Uh, not so, not so good. Right. So <laughs> yeah. It doesn't uh, fill you with excitement. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't fill you with excitement. And, you know, I've got some range of motion in the shoulder and whatnot. Uh, it doesn't feel good. I don't have the, the mobility I have in it currently. So right now my mindset is uh, don't do that. Don't do anything trying to do that and don't try to get back too fast. If you can heal it back into a manner that's proper, then you can think about it. You can consider it. But yeah. until it's strengthened up enough, uh, let's not do that, right? So yeah. tough choice for me to make yeah. to be like, all right, hey, guy, uh, I know you're zero to 100, but I need you to like, you know, go 25 go. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, little yeah. Little. yeah go 25. Take about like, yeah, yeah, go, by, go kinda, by the speed limit for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of coast, coast for a little bit, my guy, and, uh, you know, see where you're at before you, uh, you know, step on the gas over there. Yeah, uh, kind of hard to do, but uh, I'm gonna try my, my best to, to do so, and hopefully uh, I'm able to get back into it. But currently, right now, uh, I'm gonna accept uh, where I'm at, uh, be at peace for now uh, until I get pissed off enough to where uh, somebody yeah. antagonizes me enough to where I'm like, all right, let's let's do <laughs> let's, this kind of let's thing. Let's fucking go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you want to catch these hands? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> Wake up, choose violence, man. That's that's my life. That's all I am, man. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it just depends who gets it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you just have to be the person, man. That's just, that's the thing. <laughs> that's it. Uh, big dog. Well, I'm very, very appreciative that you've given me a couple of hours of your time on a fucking hectic schedule, obviously. Um, this is any shameless plugs. I've seen you've done a couple of programs recently that you've released on Instagram. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I try to do those deals. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like I'm a very affordable coach as it is, uh, but also feel like there's some people going through you know, hardships that can't afford coaching. So I developed uh, several PDF files uh, programs that are almost as close to getting me as a coach as possible. Uh, they're pretty thorough and, you know, they're pretty affordable. So I do have those on my website. It's worldbreakersavage.com. Uh, you can find those there. Um, 
I also want to give a shout out to my sponsor, like Animal. Uh, they've been rocking with me for for years now, and they, they take good care of me and stuff like that. So I do appreciate them. Um, Devin Fortisano is also another one. Jeff House Strong, Josh Bryan, uh, those are uh, some great companies for sure. Uh, I do also want to give a shout out to uh, Frank from Lift Evil. Uh, I know I'm not a, not sponsored by him or whatnot, but uh, that man's a work machine. Uh, I, I coach him and stuff like that. Not only does he uh, go through my own training that I do, but he you know works his own business, does his own hand draws, all his own stuff. Uh, and I admire his work ethic. Uh, he goes through tons of hiccups and injuries of himself, but his work ethic is crazy. And he still gets time to, to do my training, which is not for the faint of heart, to say the least, <laughs> uh, and whatnot. So I uh, really appreciate those guys for sure. Uh, but yeah, man, it's good talking to you. I really do appreciate you having me for sure. I don't know. Th- thanks for your time, man. It's, uh, it's been, it's been meant. And I think a lot of people like lose, like they, people's attention spans are so short these days, you know, so yeah. they forget that like, okay, hang on. But since you did like most of your stuff, like two or three years ago, yeah, people are like, oh, who's Rob Hall? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, are you actually yeah. serious? Go and, yeah. go and go and Google <laughs> fucking animal cage 2018, bitch. Like, yeah. Fuck it <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. Like, you know, I, I, I'm not in the spotlight anymore and whatnot. Uh, you know, there's there's people who are going to remember you, the people who are not. But uh, I feel like um, if you just take the time and like you run into somebody and whatnot, you want to learn some more information, just pop pop the name into YouTube and it'll it'll show you some things. And uh, oh, yeah. wow, this guy's a this guy's an animal for sure. <laughs> this guy is actually the real deal. <laughs> yeah, man. he he ain't just talking shit just to talk shit, man. The yeah, guy yeah, really, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he does back it up. <laughs> yeah, he does back it up. <laughs> now, some people forget that. Some people forget that, man. I'm, I'm not just a fucking mouthpiece, you know. So I got these hands too, man. <laughs> yeah, the, the bark and the bite. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> no, I I very much appreciate it, good sir. Thank you, thank you, my man. Oh, appreciate thank it. you for your time. Thank you to the thank to you. the listeners, and we'll uh, we'll catch you next week. We'll do it, brother. <laughs>